scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Heal someone's life. Deliver someone. Do this for your glory. Make sure you're praying from the depths of your heart. This is part of the meeting. Yeah. gift of your presence in our midst we cannot do anything outside of your presence hallelujah you know the presence of God remains the secret of anything I don't care what it is the presence of God if you lack Listen, listen carefully. If you lack the presence of God, it's possible to have the power of God and his presence can fade out of your life. Are you listening to me? It's always possible. You can chase power. You can pray for power and you can get it without the presence of God. But the presence of God is a direct product is a state of the health of your fellowship with the Holy Ghost. This is the litmus test of whether or not you are in fellowship with the Holy Ghost. It's not necessarily power. A man can stay and not pray for one year. He may be absent in God's presence for one year and still lay hands on someone and they will fall. But there is a presence. That one, you can't fake it. it it's, it's an aura. It it. It gives people a picture of your current state with heaven. You can raise wheelchairs even if you never go to the secret place for years. These are gifts. But that atmosphere, that glory, when you stand and speak to people, the word of God comes into, they cannot even explain what, what is happening to them. That one is the presence of God. That's not power. 
That's not power. You can fake power, you cannot fake his presence. See, when you see a man who lives in the presence of God, when he stands before you, you may not understand intellectually what is happening, but you, you, you know that this is, there is, there is an intercourse, a current present reality. Many lives do not have the presence of God. They have power. They have motions. They have people falling down. Have you been in a meeting that you don't even know God is there, but you just see crutches standing up? That's power. But the presence of God, the glory of God, no mortal being can stand in the glory of God and be the same. No matter how stubborn and hardened you are, something will, an impression will be left upon your spirit. Hallelujah. See, when the presence of God dries from a life, you will know. You just sense that everything around, you can still have motions of power, but there is a freshness. That freshness is absent in many lives. So you can hear a preacher, nice message, but the impact is not about shouting or not shouting. The Bible says he shall be like a tree that is planted by the rivers of waters which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. That's a characteristic of the presence of God. Father, we pray that we will never lose your presence. Take away from us anything, whatever it is, that is capable of causing us to lose your presence. So I bow as I enter the throne room and I cast myself down at your feet for you are holy thou art holy there is none like you for in your presence that is where I must be for in your presence that is where I must be. For in your presence, that is where I must be. That is the place of my strength. In your presence, that is where. I must be Lord in your presence that's the place of wisdom in your presence that is the place of power in your presence that is the place of revelation in your presence that is the place of authority in your presence. That is the place of glory. In your presence, that's where I am strong. In your presence. Oh Lord, my God, in your presence, that's where I belong. I am seeking your face, touching your grace, in the clefts of the rock. In your 
your presence. Holy Spirit, thank you for your presence. I truly can do nothing without you. You have become my Lord, my friend. There is no ministry without your presence. You are the secret. Always. You are the secret of freshness. You are the secret. Thou art worthy, El Shaddai, Lord Almighty, strong and brave. to learn the art of God's presence. A.W. Tozer, a man known to be the 21st century prophet, wrote a book, The Pursuit of God's Presence. This generation does not know how to practice the presence of God. We know how to pray. We know how to fast. We know how to stretch in tongues for hours and days. But we do not know how to cultivate the art of his presence. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in my life. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this Oh, me, potent Father of mercy and grace, Thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, you're truly welcome in my life. I'm worshiping him. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and grace, thou art welcome. You are the fire in me. You are the power at work in me. You are my present helper. Holy Spirit, I adore. You are that fire in me. You are the power at work in me. You are my ever present helper. Holy Spirit, I adore. Nakane, 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 Girma, No Kaka, Ayabo, Nakane, 
Nakane, Nakane, Nakane, Nakane, Nakane. Hallelujah. Thank you for your presence. I have learned the value of your presence. I won't trade anything for your presence. I have learned the value of your presence, my King. I love your presence. Pray a prayer in one minute and say, Lord, cast me not away from your presence. Pray and say, Lord, may I not. Many of us have lost the experience of his presence. You're just operating power. I'm telling you. Your presence. This is part of the meeting. You can really get distracted and forget his presence. Your presence. I have learned the value of your presence. How can I? How can I lose your presence? What for? Make sure you are praying. This is part of the meeting. Hallelujah. The presence of God, the glory of God, can make a man, it can affect even your physical body. The glory of God, your physical body, it can keep you young, fresh. This is not about money. It's not about prosperity. It's the glory of God. The glory of God can alter you. It can bring you into an atmosphere. This is not just power you invoke and prime. No, no. It's an atmosphere. You live there. You dwell there. You speak from there. You judge things from there. Moses said, show me your glory. God said, no man will see my glory and live. He said, however, I will let my goodness pass by you. And he covered Moses' eyes. And the Bible says he stepped and Moses saw eternity pass. I'm very disturbed at how easily people can give up God's presence to take something that can be found when his presence is treasured. What are you looking for? Fame, money, power, charisma, ministry, anointing, intelligence. You see, I'm telling you, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ We've lost the art of God's presence. That you are praying. Prayer is not the same as the presence of God. Many people think that you are praying in tongues. Have you not seen people who pray week after week every day? But there are certain people when they step in. It's an atmosphere. It's an atmosphere. In the glory I will stand. Help me with the symbol, please. I will stand and I will lift my hand in your glory. 
I will receive every miracle you have for me in your glory I will stand I will stand and I will lift my hands in your glory I will receive every miracle you have for me I love your presence I truly love your presence more than gold more than silver oh I love your presence I love your presence I have learned the value of your presence better than power better than anointing I'm telling you better than fame nothing can be compared to the presence of the Lord Jesus see without the presence of God you don't have a message you don't have a ministry you don't have an assignment learn this everything you will ever be and do will only have value because there is a presence that backs you stop chasing after what his presence can give you i have learned by experience moses said lord do not send us from here yes let the people say we are marking time but don't send us if your presence will not go with us he understood the value many of us have not been trained the, the presence of God is not goosebumps the presence of God is not some ecstatic feeling and the Lord walking with them not answering their prayers walking with them and the Lord making his habitation. Father, teach us your presence and help us to value your presence. In the name of Jesus, please be seated. Hallelujah. How many of you truly love the Lord with your life? Let me see your hands. You truly love the Lord. Some of you love the Lord, but you don't truly love Him. You love Him, but not... Years ago, the Lord asked me and said, Can you die for me? I said, No. I can face persecution for you. I can go through several things. But to die for you, no way. No way. I'm not sure I've gotten to that point. And it did something to my heart. I don't know what he did. I cannot explain. But I know I love him. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I truly live for you alone every breath that I take every moment I'm away have your way in me Lord I give you my heart 
give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take, every moment I'm away. Would you have your way tonight? Have your way in me. Hallelujah. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way in me. Take your place. Take your place in my life. Have your way in me. Have your way, Lord. I want to be under so much influence of the Holy Ghost. I want him to possess every fiber of my being. Just like a demon spirit possesses a man and begins to demonstrate his character through that man. I want to be so full of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, and Stephen was full of the Holy Ghost to an extent that his face began to glow as though it were that of an angel. There is such a realm there is such a realm where a man can become like a god upon the earth. Not by usurping authority over people. Climbing a mountain in the spirit. The Bible talks of men who this earth was not worthy to receive. They contended for certain things that were higher in the spirit. Always examine yourself to find out whether you are losing his presence. Don't use miracles as a sign that the presence of God is still with you. The psalmist said, cast me not away. That means a man can be casted from his presence. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. It's good to have everyone around. We bless God for last week. Hallelujah. Celebrate God's servant, Pastor Williams. That was a powerful word. Thank you so much, sir. Hallelujah. It was a great time last week. I missed the house. I know some of you didn't miss me. You were very happy. I have good news for you. I'm back. Praise God. I'm back alive, strong. God kept me for your sake. You shout it more than ever until you change. Hallelujah. If you don't love God, you will not love me. James 1, verse 22. James 1. Please make sure you are writing. These are some of the few things you do that makes you know whether you are growing or you are not growing. If you've been coming here for a long time, if you're coming for the first time, it's okay. Or if you're not yet born again. But if you've been coming for a long time and you don't have a, a good notebook or notepad or jotter or something, or at least your phone, your notepad on your phone, that you can write out teachings, it tells me how much you value God. It's amazing how people give God so little of their life and time, yet they demand so much from him. Hallelujah. We give God a fraction, just a fraction of our attention, our lives, and then we sit back and wonder, Lord, why is my life not like so-so-so person's own? And God is saying, this person has given me all. Hallelujah. For as long as there was no more vessel, the oil stopped flowing. So make sure you write, pay attention to the things that are taught. It will build you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. James 1, 22.
Did you hug one another? While seated, just turn to your neighbor and hug the person left or right. We didn't do that. We believe in love. Do it. Don't look at me. Some of you are frowning as if it's a curse. Hug one another. At least this is what we do now in, in lieu of holy kiss. <laughs> Hallelujah. One day, I remember some years ago, I was in a relationship seminar and they asked me, they said, is there holy kiss in the church of God? Ah. I told them I want to be your friend. Don't ask me those questions. No. Hallelujah. At least I know that you can kiss a very small lady and a very old woman. <laughs> if you truly love the person, you can kiss a very small lady like my sweetheart. Yeah? She always receives a kiss from me. And then very old. If you really love that old woman with agape, you should have no problem kissing the old woman and say, Mommy, nah. How did we get here? <laughs> James 1. <laughs> but be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like a man beholding his natural face in a mirror. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and immediately forget what manner of man he was. Can you imagine? But whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth in it. Take note. He looks into the perfect law of liberty and he continues in it. He said, he be not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word. What's the reward? This kind of man shall be blessed in his deed hallelujah now there are lots of believers who as they begin to walk with god they start saying lord why am i not receiving results in my life why is brother so 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 or sister so 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 receiving results and i've been born again for a long time i come to church i pray and i fast hallelujah but then i'm not seeing the manifestation of God's word in my life. I'm not seeing evidences that show that I am truly walking with the word and that the word is working in my life. Hallelujah. And several times people send me text messages and say, I love God. I, I've done everything I know how to do. I mean, this thing is either the word is not working. I can't explain it. I've done everything I know how to do. I've prayed. I've fasted. You know, I read scripture, I even bought books. And I'm even doubting now whether this thing works or not. Hallelujah. Tonight I trust that God will help us examine that truth and then we'll pray. The Bible says, James 1 verse 22. Anyone with Amplified? James 1 22. I'm seeing a woman outside. You're holding a child. You came with a baby. I think you wore traditionals. Please, can I have that woman outside? You came with a baby. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. You came with a baby. Please, when you find that person, let her come. See a woman with a baby. Let's continue. James 1, 22. Amplified. Who is there? Because he the word. Can you help her with a mic, please? I like the rendition. I'm still seeing the woman. A woman with a baby. Child. Small child. Not really a newborn baby like few months. I think it may be maybe some years, a year or so. Yes. But be doers of the word. Obey the message. Listen. But be doers of the word. 
obeying the message, okay? And not merely listeners to it. And not merely listeners to it, okay? Betraying yourselves. Betraying yourselves. Into deception. Into deception. By reasoning contrary to the truth. By reasoning contrary to the truth. It says obeying the message. See, a lot of people wonder why they don't see results in their lives. And they love God. They come to church. They are sincere people. Hallelujah. But over a long period of time, nothing, nothing at all seems to work in their lives. They have scriptures in their mind. They can quote scriptures. And then they wonder why these things are not working. And the Bible begins to give us an insight into what may be the possible cause. It says what? Be ye doers. Say after me, doers. Practitioners of the word. He said, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. That means in a crowd like this, there are people who can be hearers. Oh, glory. I'm hearing this word. I believe it. I take it. I receive it. Hallelujah. The Bible calls them hearers. But then it is possible that as the word of God is coming, you are hearing, but there is no willingness in you to practice the principles and live by the word. It says, do not be hearers only, deceiving yourselves. In other words, the, Bob, the Bible calls it self-deceit. Hallelujah. You are listening to the word just like everyone. You can quote the scripture just like everyone. You know the songs. You know all the religious cliches. But the Bible says that they are not practitioners of the word. They don't live by it. They are not committed to walking in the truth at all cost of the word. And the Bible calls that, if you are a victim of that, the Bible says you have been deceiving yourself. So it is possible for a man to deceive himself. And there are many Christians, many pastors, many members, many great men and women of God who are living in deceit, deceiving themselves. They love God, but they are not practitioners of God's word. Can I tell you something? The performance of the word is for doers. Faith is not just hearing what God has said. Faith is doing what God says. Without an action, without a doing, there is no faith. I'm telling you, many believers, born again, tongue-talking believers, are not practitioners of kingdom principles. They know it. And, and you see, look up, please, look up. The most dangerous thing that can happen to any man is for you to know certain truths and not practice it. Because anytime you hear someone teaching it, there is that hardness you already know. Hallelujah. You already know. But it's not working in your life. It's not producing results. That means something is wrong. He said, meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them. And it leaves you with a promise. He says, so that thy profiting will appear unto all. So could it be that we have many believers who hear the word? MP3s all the time in their ears. And not many are committed to the practice of God's word. You truly do not believe the word if you don't practice. Any part of scripture you have not been practicing is the part you don't believe. No matter how you try to convince yourself. According to God's principles, you have believed a thing truly. If you are living by it. So you see that we have many Christians but few believers. Not many people truly believe the word. Hallelujah. Look up. For those that are students, when ABU brought out your timetable, did you believe that timetable? How did you prove that you believed it? When your lecture was 8 o'clock, were you sleeping? You got up and went to class believing 
you didn't see the person who pasted the timetable. Correct? But you were so convinced. If you just lay down there and say, ah, my timetable is out. When they brought out your exam timetable, how did you prove you believed it? People jam packed the library. That's faith in the administration. So many people now say, I love the Lord. Lord, I love you. The urgency in your spirit during exams tells you how much you trust that those people will not change that timetable and that you had better be serious. Are you listening to me? But when it comes to practicing God's word, there is no urgency, there is complacency, and people just hope that maybe it will work. It tells on the way we respond and live by the word of God. So we have people tithing today, not tithing tomorrow. We have people loving today, not loving tomorrow. We have people studying the word and not studying. And then you ask people why. And they tell you, look, if you really know what is happening in my life now, you even thank God that I'm still born again. <laughs> Hallelujah. And you expect people to sympathize with you. And you say, look, see, just forget to, it's just God that is helping me right now. <laughs> Can I tell you something, friends? Listen, if you bend from living by God's principles, it will not be an excuse for God to just see your tears and bring blessings into your life. You will suffer ruthlessly for it. If everyone else is practicing what is not of God, and you say, Tom, will I stand alone? You will suffer. Are you listening to me? If you claim God's word is not working and you leave it, then what else are you practicing? Hallelujah. Many believers truly do not live by the word of God. The Bible says, be ye doers. This looks very simple. Very, very simple. But this is the reason why so many people will never walk in certain realms of the reality of the kingdom life. Because we truly do not live by the word. Deceiving yourselves. Hallelujah. Many believers, many hearers, we have all kinds of tapes. Different bookstores. Oh God, Jordan is here. His bookstore is full of tapes and books. There are many of us who buy books and buy tapes every week. When they go to your room, they see series of different men of God. Different series. Hallelujah. Say, have you read this book? You say, yes, Abba, chapter 1 talks about this, chapter 1. And then you see the person is chorusing the solution for his predicament, yet not changed by it. Hallelujah. Have you seen such kind of people? They can tell you when they are counseling somebody, you, you hear them speak. Ask them. You can attach someone who just got born again to them and they will train the person and you become a wonder in the spirit but they themselves will never rise beyond that level. But they understand the spiritual principles. You can send them on evangelism. They will bring back souls. They can do great motions but to live and get personal success in their lives as a result of the word of God, they will never do it. That's why Paul said, let it not be that after I have preached, I myself will be a castaway. That means it is possible. There are many men of God who are victims of the things they teach. They stand on stage and attack immorality as if they don't know who a lady is. But you search their lives and see. Every hotel already knows them. Doers of the word. There are many preachers who teach on tithing and giving. They themselves don't give. The reason why they are still rich is because people are sowing into their lives. So they don't know the difference. They don't live by the word of God. Many people say, okay, speak the word and pray. But the leaders themselves don't pray. Hallelujah. You go to a man of God's house, you see him cross his leg and he's watching football match. He gives you the timetable. See, have you not known that the Bible says there is no man that warreth who will entangle himself with civilian affairs. 
You see why certain people do not have personal success in their lives? Because the truth is, they have not come to a point where they love God genuinely. And are willing to live by his principles. There are men of God who declare fasting and prayer. And while the people are fasting, they are eating stockfish. Nobody knows. You just see them come. You see, we can fake every kind of thing on stage. But can I tell you something? Just as light and darkness cannot be mistaken, one day it will show whether you are standing in God's word or not. Hallelujah. Every time I pick up my Bible, I tell the Lord, am I studying simply because of the responsibility of ministry? Is it because I must prepare a message for God's people? Or is it because people will come for counseling? Hallelujah. Then you see people come and they stand to cast out devils and embarrass themselves. Yeah, that's where the robber will hit the road. I bind you in the name of Jesus Christ. And they go back with untold predicaments as a result of daring hell with a hypocritical spirit. It's easy to stand before people. I take authority over this devil. And then the man cannot sleep in the night in his house. He will call somebody and say, can you just come and stroll around? Because even him, he's not convinced that the name of Jesus works. It just so happened that he was used and the demon left. I'll never forget in secondary school when we prayed for one interesting boy that used to sleep on top of my bunk. And the devils came out. Oh, you, 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 come, you need to come and see us. When evening came. Bible says, and when evening came. That was when Jesus was healing. But when evening came for us, that was when it became a serious concern. People started singing praise and worship, strolling out of their rooms, moving to the, and they took light. I didn't sleep there. You watch people teach about certain kingdom principles and when you see them you say my god look at the the unwavering audacity but then they don't believe it someone teaches on tithing and says i assure you if you don't tithe you will do this this person ask him in all sincerity you see we are not in the old testament otherwise many men of god would have been humbled by now many of us i'm not just saying them you know now God's grace is everybody can do everything. Whether you are tithing or not, who will know? It's just you and God. But can I tell you something? A day will come, the fruit of the tree will show. Are you listening to me? Many believers, many of us don't pray. You don't pray. The only time you really have to pray is when you come for koinonia. So when you are praying, you just feel that spirit you felt last week. Ba, 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 ba. And you are feeling guilty as you are praying. You know that you have neglected your secret place. Some of us rub our Bibles on our bed. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus Christ. I declare safe journey to Koinonia. And then you are leaving. It's not a priority. It's not a priority. It will only happen if they say, all right, in uh, maybe... Uh, protocol or worship or any department, you are the one who will lead prayers. And then you fast and pray and believe that all heavens are open. Only just to perform that religious ritual and then you leave. But can I tell you something? You can deceive man, but in the realm of the spirit, there is no deceit. A lot of people say you cannot deceive God. You cannot even deceive demons. You see, because in the realm of the spirit, everything lays bare. I hope you know that. You can deceive men in this realm. But I tell you the truth, in the realm of the spirit, everything lays bare. Ask the sons of Sceva. Paul was doing certain things and one day, the Bible says, they gathered, come sir. They carried somebody, sons of Sceva, plenty of them. And they came and they quietly locked the door. They said, we adjure you in the name of Jesus whom Paul preaches. Is that not the real Jesus? And the demon says, today is today. You will know that we have been watching you. He said, Jesus, I know. In other words, I see them in the secret. We know that they are living by the principles of God's word. 
and so we can attest. See, if you don't, if you don't run away from God in the secret, He will not disappoint you in the open. He said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. He said, But who are you? He said, Since you want to pretend, it's time for the whole community to know that this anointing is fake. And the Bible says, That spirit beat all of them, one, stripped off their clothes, two, and drove them out for the whole city to see. So imagine the men of God in that city naked. What happened? Not accident, not bomb blast, no nothing. You say a victim of uh <laughs> you just imagine miracle service and then just imagine all of us running me and bishop stand i say let's stand in unity what happened oh but that's what happened that's what the bible says happened do you do you think those guys will be the same they will first run away from that environment and go and say what minute these things i thought it was so easy when you see a man who is living by the word doing some things, you think it's so easy and cheap. And then you come with the absence of God's presence and you try to do the same thing and you receive a root shock in your life. Be ye doers. Be ye doers. Are you a doer of the word? Are you truly practicing the principles that you know? Or do you just say, oh, I know, I know, at least I, I know, God knows. Are you a practitioner of the word? Hallelujah. There are many men of God who teach about giving. They are as stingy as anything. They don't give anybody anything. Anything. If ever they give, it's from what they gave them. You don't need faith to do that one. It came as a gift. And then you give it. Hallelujah. This is very important. Are you a practitioner of God's word? We teach on character. We teach on the anointing. We teach on certain principles. There have been so many messages that have come from this ground. I told you that some years ago, God asked me to do something. That's a customized dealing between me and the Holy Spirit. For one week, I was reading, chewing, devouring any book and any tape I find. Whether it's relevant to me or not, I just wanted to grow. Studying the Bible, reading chapters upon chapters, books upon books in a day. And then one time, the Lord told me for the next one week, I shouldn't open my Bible. I went back to those notebooks that I had been jotting. And the Lord told me if I were practicing up to 10% of the things that were there, my life would have changed. And I was ashamed of myself because I know God cannot lie. Many of you are holding the solutions to your life and destiny in these books that you keep bringing week after week. You do not respect what you wrote with your own hands. You cried on the day you were writing it. Somebody even gave you a handkerchief and you clean and you quickly wrote it. But you are not living by it. You cried that day as if you will live. They say make commitments and before they said anything you were the first to go down on your knees. But after that. You see that's why honestly, honestly I'm not carried away when people just kneel down or lie down or roll. I'm not saying don't do that. But there's too much emotion in the church. Too much emotion. And we men of God are consoled whenever there are emotions because we feel, ah, the people are really getting it. The power of God is flowing. Not necessarily so. If I sing a very nice song now, whether the name of Jesus is there or not, some of you will start crying. You are just emotional. He will just remind you of maybe one, your children's choir song, something, and you just start crying. It doesn't mean you are being changed. It's just simple memory of the past. Very few believers. See, every time I pray to God, I lie down and I say, Lord, help me. I cannot boast that I'm practicing every single part of the word, but help me. This must be your attitude. It's not just the truth you know. It's not just what you've had. What are you doing about it? 
There are many of you that give koinonia messages to your friends and your family members. Powerful messages that can get them out of their predicaments. They collected it, put it in their laptops. They've not listened to it. Some of you have all the koinonia messages, including last week's one. How many have you listened to? There are people who are always collecting messages. Collecting everything. Do you have this? Abba, Jerry, Savelle, I have this. You see sections. And there's nothing that is being changed in their lives. Nothing. Not their character. Not any result. The reason, hear me, very simple but profound, is that many of us are listeners, but we are not practitioners. Hallelujah. I remember somewhere in just they were doing orientation for Jerusalem pilgrims. Those who were going to go to Jerusalem. And you know they have some time of just encouragement and for some Bible studies. After teaching them about the significance of visiting the Holy Land and the impact it should create, they were giving them warnings and they said no drinking. And one old man was just looking at them while they were talking. He didn't say anything. He was just looking at them. And later when it was time for people to comment, just say anything, A-O-B, the guy said, well, this is my own issue. I won't go and buy beer in the Holy Land, but if I see it, I won't let it spoil. You see that? Now, do you think that person will ever walk in the fullness of what God has destined? No. That's how some of us are. I won't buy cigarette, for instance. But if someone offers me, even God knows. I won't go and look for any lady. But whoever makes a mistake of coming to my house, even God knows that it's not with my leg I used and went. See, um, it's amazing how people make these confessions and they, they are happy. People smile and then they feel very fulfilled. Let me tell you something. If you are not a practitioner of the word, you will be frustrated twice. Let me tell you the first frustration. The first frustration is because you have endured too much. Secondly, only to find out that your endurance is in vain because you were deceiving yourself. You see that? So, someone who was not practicing the principles of God, who had been looking at you and been prophesying your doom, in the future it will truly happen because you have been deceiving yourself. The Bible says, be ye he says, do not just be hearers, but doers. Be doers, not just hearers, deceiving yourself. How many of us here have been deceiving ourselves? Tonight, God is really examining us. How many of us? There are, many, there are very few of us that truly put the teachings we receive to work. That's why there are very few people that have results. But God wants everyone to walk in the manifestation of the word of God in your life. That with time, something should begin to show. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. For instance, there may be some of us that still have all kinds of godless and useless musics, videos, and different things in our phones. You are born again. Hallelujah. And all those pornographic jargons are still on your phone thanks to Blackberry you can ping your destiny left and right from one person to the other receive things you should not receive and then Facebook again these things are nice if you use them well Twitter we have all kinds of media um, outlets that help people not to live by the principles of the word so you have a man of God who loves God. He's preaching the gospel. But still has in one secret place in his folder. Passworded. All kinds of pornographic jargons. And the problem is they will never admit they need help. You see the point. It's a different thing if you are struggling with a challenge and you admit and say Lord somebody help me. But where people just laugh. And then they come out and do all kinds of things. And then you sit down. And they wonder why God is not bringing members to their church. God is not bringing increase. They wonder why. And then they begin to criticize others that have this result. They say, forget about them, Jared. They must be putting their hands somewhere. Let me tell you something. Hear me and hear me very well. The Bible says, nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Having this seal, 
the Lord knoweth them that are his. Men may not know, but God knows those who are his. Hallelujah. Practitioners of the word. I listened to a message by Johnson Suleiman, a minister's conference that broke me in a very serious way. We'll be playing it for our, our Bible students. Very powerful. And this guy began to speak about, not, I'm not saying this to criticize. Many men of God, bishops, popular people you know in this country who deal on drugs. That's how they make their money. Millionaire clubs of pastors, apostles, prophets, bishops. Hallelujah. Currently, it was told that in NDLEA, drug law, there are about 230 something pastors that are under police custody for drugs. Some of them are your pastors. Who is deceiving who? Hallelujah. John Suleiman said he went to South Africa. When he went to South Africa, they asked him, they said, Kai, it's very cold, though. Do you need a warmer? The guy said, no, the AC is okay. We can adjust. He said, no, we are not. We need a warmer. He said, what do you mean a warmer? He said, a lady now, after the burden of standing to minister. Bible says, and when Abraham's wife died, they brought a lady called Keturah. So to have somebody who will come and comfort you. And he looked at the man and said, what is all this? He said, the pastors in Nigeria do it. He showed some permanent ladies that belong to many of the men of God you see and celebrate. They caught a bishop at customs office with his bishop this thing. You know their shoes are customized. They opened the shoe and saw kilograms of cocaine and in the bishop's staff, kilograms of cocaine. Are you listening to me? And a pastor who was called, 100 Bibles, 100 Bibles, in each of them, there were wraps of cocaine. Nigerians, people who stand and lift up their hands and wonder why God honors some people and turns away from some people. Tonight is a message to re-examine ourselves. Are you interested in practicing God's word at all costs? Johnson Suleiman said he was on his way going with his books and they stopped him. He said they stopped him. And they said, please, we know you are a great man, but we'll probe you. When they finished, the customs officer called him and said, are you embarrassed? I'm sorry. But right now, the situation with Nigerian pastors requires that we check a lot of things. You find out how many preachers have married abroad and have wives and children that nobody knows. Whenever the woman says, I will shout, or just get more money from building project or whatever, and just try and say, you said, keep quiet. Nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Are you a practitioner of God's word? Hallelujah. He said he was in a hotel and a lady came. Just knocked and said, you have a parcel from the receptionist. As soon as he opened the door, that was how she just stripped herself. He said he was almost tempted to sleep with her. This is a sincere man of God. Because we live in a world full of men of God who exalt themselves and try to pretend all kinds of garbages while they are dying in the secret. The Bible says, he who conceals his sin shall not be delivered, cannot prosper. Hallelujah. He said he didn't know when he turned and started shouting in tongues. That was the only help he could get. Shut up! And the lady just closed the door. Who know? Who know? He would have slept with her quietly. And his protocol will receive him in Nigeria. The great man. Whereas you have no identity in the realm of the spirit. Don't be surprised when they tell you there are pastors going to hell. Hallelujah. It's a call. How much of the word of God do you believe and are living? He said one of his sons in the ministry, he went to preach for him in Lagos. 
within one year when he started when he saw the crowd as a spiritual man he said he called him after the meeting and the son gave him a brand new bible students don't worry you watch the video it's a minister's conference we won't give people around but we will watch it hallelujah gave him a brand new car to a jeep most men of god are you not surprised that with the evil happening most of the people who should talk are not saying anything they are just keeping quiet come on now jesus said the one who dipped his hand with me in this pot is the one who is not innocent when you have dipped your hand with somebody else, will you bite the finger that is feeding you hallelujah it's sad but i must tell you this it's sad I did a little study and I'm glad he said it about the concept. Please, I'm not criticizing any pastor or anything. Please don't send me any text messages telling me jargons. Hallelujah. But the guy who ordained the bishops, his name is El Pock. And he was the one who ordained Idahosa, ordained, and you know, many of the men of God we know today. Are you listening to me? And that guy was living in a lot of as at the time he was living in a lot of sexual perversion this is the reason why most of the bishops and the great men of god they find themselves lost and materialism are two things they cannot explain see that's why the bible said lay hands suddenly on no man so that you will not be partakers of their sins you just hear one great bishop just got up ah he's gay now you try you and you are now thinking i always pray to god and say lord as i stand to minister to your people let me not transfer a faulty spirit once you see a whole congregation of people manifesting certain widespread characteristic the leaders are not to be spared i i tell you the truth the leaders are not to be spared hallelujah i told you about my encounter and worry when a lady came to knock my door by 1 p.m. Hallelujah. What she wore, it was too short. Where's my waist? This is it. See, this watch, this watch she wore. And then it had a it had a zip. Yes, she lifted it. I mean, she was proud. When I opened the door, ah! She said, sorry, I'm looking for the 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 uh, receptionist in this place. I didn't know what to say. I said, are you not seeing my room number? I'm a guest here. In the night, quietly. Who will know? Said I should come and help her go and walk a guy from her room. Come on now. When I jammed that door and I locked it, I will leave Zari and come to worry, kill my destiny and come back. See, when these things happen, that is when you will know whether you love God or not. That's why the Bible says for you to prepare. He said if your strength fails you in the day of battle, your strength is small. If you turn aside in the day of battle, there are too many people who are pretending like they are living the reality of God's word. Back to that story about that his son. And he saw the increase. After he gave him the car keys, he said, hold on. Apostle John Suleiman and his wife called him and he said, please talk to us. I'm seeing increase in my own ministry, but not like this. This does not carry the signature of God. What are you doing? The guy said, well, you know, the blessings of God and some of the, princip the principles that a daddy like you have taught us. He said, no. He told him, go out. He called his wife. He said, madam, you know that I see. Talk to me. And she began to tell him, there is a popular herbalist in this country. I won't mention names of things. He said he took the woman there and they told him that they should bring a six-year-old child together with a customized mic, just like my own here, that nobody else will hold. Listen to me. And when that sacrifice was made, they said anywhere around Lagos, if your ears can hear that mic, whether your leg likes it or not, it will enter that church and sit down there. So ministry is expanding. And many sons just come, Papa, receiving demons and spirits. And now he got a seed of a jeep 
and he gave him. John Suleiman said he said, even those who backslided did not go to the devil. They just fell short of God's grace. Is it that bad that you went? He said, from today, I delete your number from my phone. I have nothing to do with you again. Do you know how many men of God go for meetings and they go with ridiculous PAs that nobody can explain? Let me see one pretty lady. Annie, come. So I'm going, I'm going to where now? Mina. And I just drop. I tell them, please book two rooms or one large room. Anyone can serve. Two or one large room. And then I say, she's my PA. Hallelujah. And when you see the seriousness in my life, you won't even believe. Think I'm seeing every lady like trees. This is an example, oh. Media. It's an example. Hallelujah. And then what happens? In the name of PA and useless, stupid, satanic manifestations of lack of self-control, what happens? So they have different people in different spots. Just sleep with her sharp, sharp, and then they just clap for the man. Comes to sit down and he stands up. And you see people falling under the anointing. He's genuinely anointed, but he has lost the presence. See, Samson woke up from sleeping with a prostitute. Did you read that in your Bible? What did he do? Immediately, the Bible didn't say he prayed to God. Immediately, he got up, removed the gate of a city. Because they said they wanted to enter and kill him. So he said, let me remove the gate for you. He removed the gate and kept it on a mountain. That you are compromising on kingdom things and God is merciful is not an endorsement. Are you listening to me? This is what a lot of people don't know. May God deliver us from a life of falsehood and bring us into a point where we truly practice the word of God. There are many men of God who stand on stage and say, I don't owe God one night and God says, you owe me three years. Three years, you're a liar. You're shouting, I don't owe God anyone. It's not true. It's not true. They don't believe in giving. They don't give. They just have the way of getting money. They can cook up any ridiculous project that nobody can account for. And you know, the way men of God run ministry, especially, I'm telling you, especially those who are not transparent, they run it in such a way that nobody can question them. These are prophetic instructions. These are this and that. So you, sister, please, after Koinonia, let me see you in my room. It's a prophetic instruction. What nonsense is that? Who is deceiving who? Then when she comes, you say, you serve, don't you smile, Abba. <laughs> Is that not what some of your lecturers do? They look very serious. Come to my office. When you come, they say, ah, ah, relax. Who is beating you? <laughs> Those are indications of perversion. Pack your load and run away. No matter what it will cost you. Doers of the word. Doers. Whether anybody is watching you or not. You are packaging your tithe and saying, Lord, you know I honor you and I believe this. Whether you are alone or you are true, you see a challenge in your life that is questionable. You don't sit there and just say, wow, I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. You seek for help quick, quick. I've had the opportunity to pray for a lot of ministers and I do that with all humility. When I see certain people come and say, look, I'm a man of God, but I'm struggling with this and that. I tell him, I say, look, we are all products of God's grace. But for your openness and sincerity, the Lord will bless you. But there are all kinds of people who will sit down and believe they are the Alpha and the Omega. Everything about God is in them. Are you listening to me, please? So what aspect of the word have you not made up your mind to live by and practice? I will not be surprised if there are still ladies in this place that get up to go and spend weekend in one guy's house. You are here, you are looking at me. Say, Tor, won't I go? He's the only one now. The Christian brothers are not coming. Which nonsense are you saying? Who do you want now to come 
amid this kind of unfertile soil. Who do you want to come with this kind of life? The brother who is praying and sweating in your presence and praying for his destiny. Look at what you are living. I'll not be surprised if there are some of you who still tell your parents lies and inflate figures of school fees and the rest. Now you laugh because we have a church that massages things you should address. Just say, forget that lie. Don't make the people feel guilty. What nonsense is that? You don't find that in Koinonia. By the grace of God, we will attack whatever needs to be attacked in love until we present a bride that is worthy of God's power and glory and grace. Hallelujah. There are many of you that once situation becomes a bit uncomfortable, just a bit you can shake like a leaf and compromise at anything that comes. You are not a doer of the word. Tonight the Lord is asking you, are you ready to come back to a point where you truly begin to practice the word? Whether you are supervised or not, I always tell people the true proof of obedience is when you are given the opportunity to disobey. Hallelujah. If, come Tosin. If Tosin is my daughter and she's staying under my roof, you know the kind of person I am. You know there are some things I won't tolerate. I cannot say Tosin is a nice lady because I'm there. Are you listening to me? The day I leave her alone, and she has the opportunity to do anything she wants to do. But she says, I have come to take the word of my father as my own word. I'm not doing it because of him. At that point, they are the practitioners of God's word. God bless you. There are some of you, the only thing that is keeping you right now is because we are watching you. Hallelujah. One day someone came and said, pray for me. I want to go abroad. I said, why? He said, truly, I just know that God wants me to be there. I wanted to pray for the person and the Lord told me don't waste your time. This is not my desire. This person is just going to go and die. Abroad? Some of you want to go abroad. <laughs> the first day you go abroad and stand and you see ladies almost nude moving and you find out that nobody is even concerned. Ah! You just say, are you, are you serious? And I'm so happy my father's phone has spoiled. When you are not supervised, are you going to stand for truth? Do you know that there are some people that get back into things like drinking simply because maybe their group of friends are there. They say, don't fall our hands, I beg. And the guy will sit down and say, ah, just turn around and saw pretty lady. Say, oh, God, let me just do it. This is one last time. I'll ask for forgiveness later on. Are you ready to stand and live by the word? Can you be different? When people are bribing and doing other things, say, just give me my own. I won't be against you, but I won't talk. Because the way I'm seeing some of us, God is keeping you right now. It's just God that is tying your leg. You are like foxes. If they set fire and leave you, you can't do anything. That's why God has refused to expose some people into certain levels of blessings. You think he's a devil. It's because you are not ready. Hallelujah. There are many of us, the day you hold one million of your own, not that your father gave you that you should keep it for him, your, your own, that nobody knows, only you. Ha! You can book the best room in TJ Palace. You can charter a car from here and anywhere. You can take a flight, just drop in Lagos and go back. You can do anything you want to do. At that point, you find out three days, four days, you've not prayed. You say, God, no problem, we'll talk. Because there's no pressure again. It's time to begin to ask yourself, are you pretending over your passion for God? Or do you genuinely mean it? Are you just coming for koinonia because you feel, Kai, let me come. I don't want anybody asking me any question, did you come or not? Let me just kukuma come. I love the Lord on stage, anywhere. I love him with all my heart. And I'm committed 
to living by the truths of God's word that I know nothing else. I don't care what level of honor comes. And I want that to be your resolve tonight. Let me show you another scripture. Thank you, Jesus. John 13. John 13. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. John 13, verse 17. John 13, verse 17. Let's read it together if you're there. One to read. If you know these things, happy are you if you do them. So it's not enough to know. Jesus is encouraging them. He said, if you know these things, you will be happy when you do them. If you know the principles that can bring a blessed life, happy are you. There are some of you, you have your remaining exams now. You trusted God last year. It came out a way you don't like. You said, God, now I'm wiser. I won't get punished like a child again. Now I'm a man. I pray for a generation of men and women who are uncompromising. There are many of you, nobody can vouch for you. Hallelujah. There are some of you here, nobody can vouch for you. You can't beat your chest and say, Kai, I know the, the Bible says, God said, I know Abraham that he will teach his children, in the, he, will, he will raise his children in the way of the Lord. Let me ask you a question, all of you here. Who can speak for you if you are not there and say, I truly know that this person is a Christian? Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? There are many of you that nobody can speak for you. When they just ask and say, this guy, say, ah, in this life, you don't talk for people. Once you see people talking like that, they, they are already answering the question. Hallelujah. They say, sorry, want to appoint this person one post and what do you, they, ah, no, just leave that position vacant there, please. Don't give God headache. We have enough challenges in this church. See? Many of us are not dependable. You don't, your, 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 re, your resolve on God's word cannot be verified. You love God, but we are not yet sure if a guy starts meandering around you, whether you stand. It's amazing what people do in the presence of certain opportunities. Amazing. Hallelujah. I know a lady one time, some years ago, she wanted her school fees desperately. Then we used to meet at um, chapel. And the girl started attending ENI meetings actively. Apparently, she heard that it's time for payment of school fees. Every time this lady would greet me, immediately after the program, ah, I said, Lord, thank you. You are doing great things in life in this place. As soon as this girl got this school fees, I didn't see her again. Till I'm serious. About a, a year later, when it was about the same time, she just sent a text. She said, it's been a while. I miss you. I miss you. I said, me. Abba. Judas kissed Jesus, took him to hell. Nobody will kiss me and take me to hell. That's how many of us are with God. You just thank God. Hallelujah. I'm sharing this testimony. God is doing great things in my family. And at that point, especially our parents, you see that there is a sense of your father who has not done devotion in 12 years. We say, everybody wake up. Wake up, family. We are going to give God glory this morning. You just know that one arias that has been pending has suddenly come. Later on, you wake him and he says, the day you enter this room again. And you are now asking, so who is deceiving who? That's how many of us are. When you came in the session, you were very excited. Hallelujah. 
very excited. You had one pointing fingers at people and saying, these guys are not praying. What's wrong? Pray for them. Now you are the one they are praying for. Why? Every time they see you strolling around Paladin, they say, one guy told me on Facebook he loves me. See, the things people do, that's why it's good. Hear me, brothers and sisters. That's why it's good to let God examine your heart. Don't set an exam for yourself and mark yourself. Give yourself a organized speech and price for yourself and say, I'm growing. Hold on. Let God be the one to work on you. But there must be a result. There are many of us today, the way we are pursuing God, if we don't get what we want from God, it's, it's possible you just wave and say, God, I walked with you for five years. Everybody has seen now that I've tried. Bless my father, you didn't bless him. Bless my mother, you didn't bless him. Bless everybody. Leave me alone. Just bless them. You didn't even bless them. Why will I stay? You say I will backslide. Look at who is going to suffer. The throne is made of gold. Everything is made of gold. You are the one suffering here. And people who live these kinds of lives get angry at those who are paying the price to live by the word of God. Because the moment you see that there is a sister who is standing and saying, by the grace of God, I'm going to stand. I will wait for the will of God. I'm developing myself in virtue and character. Say, just say all of us are bad now. Who, did they talk to you? Our presence is judging what you are doing. Please don't eh, pray. Let's just know that us, we are sinners. What is all that? Or you just see a guy reading plenty books. He's read seven books in a week. You have been sleeping and snoring. You just wake up. Your saliva is almost, it has poured on the bed. It's almost floating now down. I just clean your face. And you hear yourself talking foolishly and he's talking like a leader. And then he say, hey, must you say it? Abba, who is not growing too? You will always hate those who are doing what you are not doing. Always. You look at broke people. The day they bless your father, neighbors that used to laugh suddenly just get angry. They just gather themselves and say, ah, ah, hey, hey rain is falling, no. Mouths that cannot drink gari is now taking butter. You see, all kinds of insinuative statements. Whatever you are not doing, when you see someone doing it, it will judge you. You go around smokers and those who drink. Once they see you going to church, they just say, ah, ah, Mother Mary, talk, pray for us. So they look like they are bold. Something is judging them. You calm them down and talk to them and they will tell you. They say, I don't like my life. But brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. Those who will receive rewards in this journey are those who are living so ask yourself are you frustrating yourself for nothing or you are truly practicing the word because it's going to be terrible if after 10 years of standing one leg in one leg out you find out that those who are truly committed are now walking in the blessings and you are still standing hallelujah have you seen those who they are inviting for a dinner for instance, and someone who just heard from somewhere, you dress too, you come and stand like them. You say, you, what do you like? Yeah, I like, uh, I like cold uh, uh, juice. You are not invited. You are there talking. You can talk like them. Once it's time for the invitation, they say, brother, so, so, this way. And you start becoming uncomfortable. And you're just standing there and say, ah, so how are you? Are you sure your name was there? How did you know you were there? Because you had been standing for long. But you are not part of it. Now, you didn't do other things. And by standing there, you are implicating yourself. Because you've already just said with someone, even say, we'll sit together. When we get their car, you're a very nice person. You talk smart. And then they say, last but not the least, sister, this. And you are just standing there. I say, what is all this? Huh? I've been standing here for long. It's not where you invited. Did you show signs of concern? That's how many people who named the name of do you know that's how many of our parents got into trouble ask them they'll tell you we did evangelism uh-huh 
We did evangelism. Say, I, I was even president of, of my fellowship. That's not the issue. Did you practice the word of God that you were taught? They say, so, so great man. He was my friend. I was even praying with him. That's the deceit. You were praying, but did you believe it? Did you walk in the truth? Others were tithing. You were there pretending and telling lies. Now, when the cloud is full of rain for those people, what happens? Those who are not tithing, it doesn't come. And you are now telling people, bring bucket, oh, rain will come. They brought buckets and drums of water. You are waiting. Say, just hold on. It, it comes gradually. It has been, you have been waiting for 20 years. It won't come because you didn't do anything. I refuse to, after committing myself to God, and then at the end, I will find out that I was only pretending and there is nothing to show forth for it. Two more scriptures and we'll pray quickly. Hebrews 4, verse 1. I will show you from this scripture. Tonight's teaching is an admonition. Let us therefore fear lest a promise be left us of entering into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it too. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. He said, but the word that was preached did not profit them. Why? Not being mixed with faith in them that had it. Look up. So they had it. But what happened? It did not produce results. See, listen, let me tell you something. That's why you can have a crowd of people like this. And we are praying and releasing blessings. And you see some people lifting their hands. But they don't even believe. They are just wondering, will it really happen? How are we even sure this man of God is genuinely anointed? You are there arguing. Somebody is opening up his spirit. Next week, the person comes with a testimony. And say, why is it that there are some specific people? I will find out this thing. Next Sunday, I will come early and go and stand and see what media people are doing. That's the cynical spirit that people have as a result of not seeing results in their lives. The Bible says they had the word. The word of faith, the word of healing, the word of restoration, the word of prosperity, the word of godliness, the word of success, the word of increase. They had it. They jumped like everybody. They shook hands with everybody. They danced with everybody. But they did not practice it. Can I tell you something? One of the things I have found out in scripture is that beyond a man of God, beyond an anointing that you sit under, you are principally responsible for working out your salvation with fear and trembling. The Bible says, work out your salvation. Work it out. When the word is released, you receive it. There are some of you that have been here with terminal diseases. It's been for a while. And you're just laughing and saying, well, well, this and that. For some of you, probably, part of the reason why you are not even receiving is you don't even believe. See, let me advise you. Don't come here if you don't believe I'm a man of God. You are wasting your time. Did you know that it's possible for people to do that? You just come and sit down and watch and say, ah, ah. And this happens especially for elderly people. When they come and see us stand here, they say, ah, these are young people. And, and, and you watch them sitting in their predicament. Look, let me tell you something. When it comes to the things of the spirit, drop your age, your title, your reputation, your educational status, whatever, and with meekness, you receive. That's the problem with a lot of people. Some of you have been calling some of your parents who have serious sicknesses to come. They say, ah, it's just youth. Hallelujah. I remember going, going to one house to go and pray for them. They've heard about me. They've listened to the messages. And when I went there, I saw the shock on the man's face. Apparently, he thought he was his age mate coming. When I came in, he couldn't believe it. Ah. So he sat down. And then for him to talk, he was just merry-go-rounding. He was wondering. Because some of his children are older than me. You know, he was talking, hey, how have I degraded myself? Now, and I sat down there. And with all humility, I was pitying the man. I said, who is suffering? I was sitting peacefully at home. You didn't let my phone rest. Now I have come. 
This guy was suffering something. He didn't want to say it. It was a medical condition. It was me and him. He could not speak. These are things I have had for years. It's amazing how some people come to look and they just look and they say this and that. A man is suffering from a particular... He just sits down and you just... Who are you deceiving? Every time William Branham wanted to minister to people, he would look at them and say, Do you take me? Do you receive me as a prophet of God? People would say yes. Instantly, the vistas of their life will be opened up to him and he will begin to speak to them. One day, a particular man of God called me. He saw in a dream that I was ministering to him and he called. He had been struggling with certain things, to real challenges in his life. And when he called, he said, well, God showed me this thing there and I wanted us to rob mines together. I told him, keep your pride. I'm not going to pick a call and rob mine. You need, you need deliverance. And this is what God has sent for you to be done. If you are ready, come. Don't sit down there and say, we're not robbing mines. Many of you will never admit. See, it, this is not bragging. This is not bragging. This could probably be the reason why some of you are not receiving any blessings. You see the protocol people start and say, Abba, Sonny, Abba, you are looking at me, okay, Sonny, we entered car together with you. You don't know difference. My parents suffered for years. I was still anointed and liberating many families. For years, it grieved my spirit. Did you know that in all my years of ministry, I've only ministered in my state. Aside from crusades we organized, I've only ministered once in my own state. There are few places in this country I've not gone to, but in my own state, only once. You see that? This can be reasons why people don't receive. From the day, see, this is not human worship. By the grace of God, we respect. It's childishness. If an elderly person, someone older than you can give birth to, is respecting your grace, and you are now bragging, you are a child. There is not demonic possession. The, the remedy is just to grow up. But let me tell you something. You must open up your heart and receive. Praise the Lord. Are you receiving something? This could be probably part of the reason why some of you are not blessed. Every time you are receiving the word, you are just looking and saying, oh yeah, yeah, again. And you are remaining where you are. The anointing reacts to honor. brother. When God has put a man over your life, he's not your friend. He's not your colleague. It is in an attempt to express this point that certain men of God raise themselves. But the Bible says, do not exalt yourself more highly than you ought to be. There are people I will never joke with. I can be smiling with them. But the moment I want to beckon in the capacity of their anointing and call, I bring myself to my proper position. This is what some of you have been missing. Hallelujah. Sometimes we give spiritual instructions here to help you. Read a particular book. Pray. Throughout this week, go and you just laugh. See, your adherence to instructions. It says, my son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from out of thy heart. Thy eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart. He said, they are life to those who find and help to their flesh. This is the reason why some of you are not receiving results. You're not participating in the things that can build you because you don't believe. But tonight I pray that God will give us the heart to be doers of the word. Not just hear us deceiving ourselves because in the end you are the one who will suffer it alone. I believe the word of God. I believe in you. I believe in your word and the power of its truth. I believe in you. So I lay down my cause that the cross might be found. 
in you I believe in you I believe in your word and the power of its truth I believe in you so I lay down my cause that the cross might be found in you I believe this word we're going to pray in the next five minutes listen and I don't know how you're going to cry unto God but you're going to tell him Lord I'm making up my mind. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hear the prayer point first. I'm making up my mind to be a doer of the word. You're going to honestly repent and say, Lord, I've not been tightened. I'm not faithful. See, when, when you are honest before God and you say, Lord, you are not, a you are not an unjust God, truly, have not been obedient to your principles. You don't pray. You don't speak the word. We talk about speaking the word. Many of you just feel this is for children. Look at what your life is. Look at what your life is. Anything comes and goes. Hallelujah. But tonight we are going to pray. We are going to say, Lord, I'm not ready to tell lies again. I, I leave this aspect of the word, but I'm not serious. In this aspect some of us is in the aspect of character you can pray you can fast but character you've never sat down to work on it it's not an issue hallelujah some of us is love some of us is the spirit of excellence we keep saying these things you're not going to hear anything new these are the principles that have made great people but let me tell you something listen there must be a resolve in your heart. God supplies the grace, but you are the one who will make the resolve. The Bible says the prodigal son came to himself. No preacher preached to him. The prodigal son did what? Came to himself. Some of us may need to come to ourselves today and attack some things out of your life. Pornography, immorality, hallelujah, falsehood, every kind of thing that is not consistent with Christ. You're going to make up your mind and say, Lord, I'm going to live by your word. This is what your principle says. And no matter what it will cost me, I lay down pride. I lay, listen, see, look up. It's not difficult. Just resolve that you are going to be a genuine Christian. Is that too much for you? Is it too much for you to say, I'm going to mean business with God? Every principle that I am taught with childlike faith, I'm going to walk. See, listen. I remember one time I was teaching someone how to drive. This guy was learning. Before I finish saying something, he would say, I know, I know. I'll say, okay, drive it and I'll turn. And you just do blunders. I know, I know. If you find yourself in that attitude, you are on your way to doom. There are some of us, that's what has caused you into trouble. I know, I know everything. I know, pray, I know, I know this, I know that. Shut up and sit down and learn. When I see people say things about me and I see certain people great leaders in the body of Christ that I respect and I admire and I see the dimensions they are operating in I feel like a child and a toddler and I maintain that posture of humility accepting that there are so many things I need to learn and know and I humble myself and take it there are many of us the last time you made progress in your life was years ago because everything you know you are sinking they are saying give me your hand you say I know are you joking I can swim you are dying Bring your hand for help. I know. That's how many people are. That's how many of our parents are. God has raised some of you as saviors, but every time you want to speak to them, I know they are dying. I know. This is not an issue of medication. They've spent millions on the treatment. Get to a place where you will be free. I know. Don't worry. We have things under control. 
run away from that demonic attitude we are going to pray rise up on your feet I hope someone received something tonight this message is preparing us for the miracle service in the next five minutes listen in the next five minutes I like us to if you want to lie down you want to cry instrumentalist I want you to really play we are going to cry unto God in the next five minutes and say Lord I've not been practicing the word in this aspect and this aspect there's no demon stopping my progress I'm the one I must admit it and you're going to pray lift your voice please don't look at anybody inside and outside lift your voice and pray Lord cry unto him say Lord I know many of the principles that would have brought me prosperity that would have brought me grace that would have brought me increase I've not made up my mind to pay the price and live by these principles lift your voice and pray don't deceive yourself again the bible says be ye to us be ye to us there are issues in your life you've been afraid of confronting what you don't confront you don't conquer lift your voice and pray say lord i've not been praying for weeks i've not been praying for months i look like i'm a prayer warrior but i've been deceiving myself I've not given up wrong associations. I want to, but I've not given them up. Lift your voice and pray. I will not deceive myself. I vow to be a practitioner of kingdom principles. No matter what it will cost you. No matter what it will cost you. We are praying inside and outside just five minutes. Hallelujah. Listen. You know what rebellion is? Rebellion is the willful, perpetual, and continuous state of working in non-compliance with the principles of God. Although you know, let me tell you something, if you don't do something about it, one day your life will be written Ichabod. The glory will rise gradually, but you will arise like Samson. The strength of many men have disappeared because they lack the stature to stay and continue in the spirit. Lift your voice and say, Lord, help me. Lift your voice and say, Lord, help me. Abakaraba set alabaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradaradarad
live and walk in the truth of God's word no matter how hard it is that I walk in it until it becomes a habit until it becomes a habit whether it's tithing whether it's speaking the word whether it's your study of God's word studying books that will develop you you know these principles get the tapes get the teachings share them again practice them lift your voice and cry for grace Lord release grace upon us grace unwavering committer to walk by your principles no matter what happens you are faithful you are not a man that you should lie not the son of man that you should repent we can take you by your word you are trustworthy you are reliable we need not trust any other thing hallelujah look up look up see many of you need to go back home and go and talk to some of your loved ones all those all those renewal covenants and those devilish things you go and do that they bring whatever prophet to your house you know that those things are wrong you must not walk in rebellion it's time for you to demonstrate the sincerity of your committer the things you used to do you can't do it again and say you are the same don't just say I'm the righteousness of God no let me tell you something listen to me listen to me even if Satan accesses a life access was given to him you will be ready to judge all disobedience when your obedience is complete this message as simple as it is this night I pray that it will ring in your spirit I pray that you will not just be emotional about it take action some of you will need to call some friends and tell them you've been nice but I'm really sorry we cannot continue again we are not going the same place what if they say I'm bad that's the problem you can't find yourself everywhere doing everything and say you are going somewhere no no great people don't behave like that you've got to be different it may cost you your reputation it may cost you misunderstanding you focus with time when your light shines everyone will see it hallelujah praise the lord so take your eyes away from the storms no matter how raging they may look and for a few minutes let's focus our attention on jesus christ the lord l-o-r-d sovereign ruler it means incontestable he didn't win an election praise the lord i welcome everyone again to a miracle service for the month of april and it doubles as the final day for our prayer and fasting we have been waiting upon the lord in prayer in fast and we thank god for what he has done and what he will yet do praise the lord very quickly before i get into the word we have a lot to do tonight is um, a miracle and a communion service so we are going to start with the communion and then afterwards um, we'll just have some time to minister to the sick and to trust the lord to come in in a mighty way and to lift us up um, i pray that i remember to share with us a few things to expect every time you come before god it's not important to have an expectation you must know what else can be expected you can have an expectation that is based on your limited understanding of who god is but sometimes your horizon needs to be broadened to know what else he can do so in as much as it's good to have an expectation you must know that more than my expectation he is able the bible says now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all we ask or think so god's ability is limitless praise the lord hallelujah there are so many people tonight i may 
not want to necessarily interrupt the flow of what God is doing we'll find some time in the course of the service to just take our time and really really honor and appreciate everyone there are people who have traveled from everywhere within and outside this nation and we honor all the men and women of God I have my dear friends and the ministers of God seated here in front we'll take our time to really really celebrate everyone later on but I want us to just focus on the word and let's trust the Lord to help us praise the Lord amen second Peter chapter 1 we began to deal with this second Peter chapter 1 we're reading the first three verses just to establish something for our faith to rest upon and then we trust God and whilst we are doing that please may I request that the communion be set so that we would make it really really very fast we'll start from verse 2 verse 2 and 3 it says grace and peace please look up if you don't have a Bible be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord verse 3 according as his divine power stop and let me just buttress on this for the sake of those who are just joining us today we establish the fact that every possibility in the kingdom comes from his divine power that means the active agency that is responsible for results in this kingdom it is not his word it is not faith it is his divine power please understand faith and the word are instruments that convey his divine power that the active ingredient the force behind the performance of god is his divine power the bible says his divine power hath given unto us all things that means there is nothing that is outside of the jurisdiction of his divine power to provide are we together so if you are healed the agency that brought that healing is his divine power if you are lifted tonight like you will be it comes from his divine power if god opens a door if he smashes obstacles no matter what it is whatever happens in your life that can only be done by god was sponsored by his divine power are we together now so we're establishing this please get the teaching yesterday the dynamics of the anointing please please get it it is very important that your understanding about how the power of god works is straightened and accurate i shared something yesterday i might repeat a little bit of it this morning or this evening really but then the goal is to get us to solidify our understanding it's a very simple principle but if you do not have it you may never see the power of god at work are we together now yes so his divine power hath given us all lifting all healing all speed all restoration are we together now all energizings all deliverances his divine power because for many years you see from preachers to members to elders in the faith we have not exactly understood the dynamics how the word of god how faith and how the anointing synergizes themselves together to produce a performance in believers so we have those who believe in what they may call the word we have those who believe in what you may call faith we have those who believe in what you call the power of god and none of them is wrong because the results show they must be doing something right are we together now yes the divine power of god is the central working force that bets his ability in the life of people and over their situations the word of god listen like i taught you faith you know comes from the word of god your conviction of it are we together now faith is derived from the word of god that means that god has made several propositions in scripture according to his integrity is a manifesto of what he is able to do are we together now so he's proposing to the saints that for trusting me these are the possibilities that can accrue to your life so it's up to you by the ministry of the holy spirit to come to a point of conviction 
are we together now when you come to that point of conviction then you are mandated to demonstrate your conviction through an action of obedience the name given to both the conviction and the action you take is faith if you are convicted and do not act in compliance with the condition that makes for that result you have believed but you are not in faith is it simple enough are we together now that means that faith is not only resident within the heart it starts with the heart but there must be a step that is taken to honor your conviction understanding has come to you when you know your role in the equation of your results if you do not know the role you have to play in the equation of your result you do not understand it this is very important but the word of god please listen is the agency by which faith is built it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god it doesn't necessarily mean just hearing a voice that means that there is a system of interaction with your spirit man when you are exposed to whether the written word or the spoken word if it's the word that comes from god it sustains an ability to rest upon your spirit full of god's convictions the bible is full of his propositions this is what i can do and then you prove it by saying lord i trust you so the word of god itself i'm careful to say this now because i don't want you to make to sound like the word of god is not powerful it is powerful but it is powerful because it is the carrier and the container of his power are we together now the anointing follows the word of god wherever the word of god goes that's where the anointing goes so if the word of god goes in the direction of healing his power goes in the direction of healing if the word of god goes in the direction of lifting his power goes in the direction of lifting but i said something yesterday that i will establish quickly for the purpose of the impartation that would happen later that our limitations or the inability to see the fullness of god's power is caused by two factors yesterday i attempted to establish that number one the nature of the operation of the anointing is that just because you are anointed does not mean everything can be done the anointing works like money are we together now that every level and every dimension has a spiritual price tag the possibilities that can be purchased at that level if you have 10,000 naira there are certain things you can obtain with that amount are we together now you cannot obtain anything higher than 10,000 so I gave an example yesterday come doctor I gave an example yesterday that if I am a man of God and I have let me use for the purpose of example say 100,000 naira worth of anointing watch this I hope you understand why my, my example when this gentleman comes to receive from me under god god is limitless his power is limitless the holy spirit is unlimited are we together now but remember the possibilities are according to the power that works not lives in me are we together now then when i pray for this brother father bless him father lift him the level of grace that i have are we together now will scan through this man's life and only solve the problems that are within the grace oh dear i'm just spotting him please let's honor the pastor of second equa here may the lord honor you sir i cannot but honor you thank you surprise surprise thank you god bless you so much sir hallelujah are we together so this man has he's in need of restoration watch this now he's in need of speed he's in need of lifting he's in need of deliverance he's in need of healing he's in need of impartation of a supernatural grace say the gift of the spirit it is only the problem that is within the level of the anointing i have that will be solved he may fall down he may roll under the anointing he will get up with some cases solved and others not solved 
this is the reason why being anointed once is not enough you must strive to grow in glory because you get to a point where every challenge that is brought is within the level of your grace that's when you become a blessing so the bible says it this way how god anointed jesus you see that now the secret of his going around doing good was not just that he was anointed look at the extent to which he was anointed when you read isaiah chapter 47 it begins to show us the dimensions of the progressions of the anointing in the life of a person and the possibilities that can happen at every level ezekiel the prophet was in a vision and he began to see a river that flowed from the east side of the temple and then it was to his ankle then it was to his knee it was to his loins and then it was a river that he could not flow through it and the bible says whatever contacted that river at that level every fish that was dead came alive there are certain conditions and levels of the anointing where certain results are activated all results are not activated at every level if you're with me say amen, amen. this is the reason why the apostles will minister and sometimes they will honestly admit that this level of grace is not at work in their life and they will go and outsource for other dimensions of the spirit to continue from where they've stopped are we together i believe and i am convinced that the sons of skiva had succeeded in some level of deliverance at one point or the other i do not want to believe that was their first trial the level of confidence reveals that they must have gotten some results so they said we adjure you by jesus whom paul preaches and hear the response of the demon jesus i know you see in other words the demon is saying i know who i am i'm not stupid i know the level of grace that can get me out here i know that jesus has it i know that paul has it but i don't know where you are standing and you see this is it so if you can if you can't pray for me and get me free then i will pounce on you you see it now it's a it's a big risk to be anointed at a very low level because you will not see the need to press for more of god and then you will believe that just because the anointing is there just like money just because you touch the back of your pocket and there's something there does not mean you have what it takes to purchase the things that you want so this is what we identified as the number one reason why we may not be able to obtain certain results and you know the level of grace and anointing at work in your life by the testimonies that recycle around your life and ministry the testimonies that recycle around your life are a testament they are proof that this is what the grace you have can produce are we together number two we discussed yesterday if you remember very carefully that the second um revelation that we must understand on the dynamics of the anointing is that your understanding is what structures the efficiency of the anointing listen carefully that means that it is not enough to be anointed the dimensions and the possibilities that the anointing produce is where your understanding takes it to i gave you an example yesterday that the anointing is likened to a reservoir of water are we together and your understanding is like the host wherever you channel the water to it will go the pressure and its ability to give life is not in doubt but the various areas that will partake of that water is governed by this host call your understanding that means listen that means that if all i know is the dimension of god that heals every time i pray for someone the only dimension they will see in their life is healing my understanding will continue to push the anointing to manifest as the healing power of god so if the person is looking for prosperity for instance i will pray for the person but you will find out that he will be healed but not prosper and the reason is because the moment i sustain an understanding of the economic system of god then the power of god can follow that new pathway to heal his finances are you getting what i'm saying now yes 
so if i do not understand the principles that make for restoration after a delay i can come and say in the name of jesus be restored no the anointing will want to follow the path of restoration but understanding has not opened the channel so the anointing is limited and it will be forced to follow the path that is currently open and if that path is healing or whatever it is then you see it there that means that you are efficient in the dispensing on the, of the power of God to the degree to which you sustain understanding of God's ways, his methodologies. Hallelujah. So in my example, like I gave, every time there was delay in a man's life, restoration came exclusively through the prophetic. Are we together now that means that if i want the power of god to bring restoration to this man the power of god must flow through the prophetic to produce that effect if it flows through any other channel it may bless the man but not restoration are you getting what i'm saying now that means that if i want restoration i will create a pathway of the prophetic for the anointing to come and bless this man this is very very powerful because most believers um and this is the reason why you may want to reason this with me for a while that our fathers respectfully speaking and all those who have gone to be with the lord a number of them did not pay the price to get illumination and spiritual enlightenment are we together they subjected themselves in much fasting and prayer and they had very heavy deposits of the anointing but you notice that with the level of anointing they had their results were small because the understanding that will give that anointing expression to manifest in the various facets of their lives were not there we went to second kings yesterday and we saw how that the problem was not the oil the problem was the vessels the vessels if there is a vessel of the understanding of the healing ministry and it is filled the anointing will flow if there is a vessel of prosperity the anointing will flow if there is a vessel of church growth the church will grow if there is a vessel of speed etc etc so it's not enough to be anointed that's why jesus mentored people by giving them over 99 percent teaching they sat under a strong teaching ministry and then in one day they received an impartation we reverse the case in our generation we are always doing impartations we lay hands you fall down you stand up we lay hands you fall down you stand up we lay hands you fall down you stand up but the results do not change because the understanding that gives it expression is not there notice that for such people who have been receiving impartation for many years the day they get any light the result is almost instant because it's like the anointing has been piling up just waiting for the doorway that opens for it the walking knowledge of the power of god i believe in the power of god but it is very frustrating to not know how it can translate to the results of people your being anointed does not mean anything until lives are changed and transformed in a way that is notable enough please listen listen take note of it in a way that is notable enough in a crowd like this my brothers and sisters please reason with me that in a crowd of thousands of people like this and several others from around the world imagine that at the end of this service only three or four or five people are healed delivered or lifted by god's standard even by human standards you did a bad job so you are a blessing to the degree to which you have intimacy with God and you understand the operations of his divine power enough to be able to flow like a river Shaba Kataya flow like a river so that in one hour someone who is probably standing I'm, I'm told they had to create a new overflow so let's use the overflow four right you're just standing at overflow four hoping lord will you touch me and in five minutes you check around and you cannot understand your life again because you have moved to another dimension his divine power 
his divine power please hear me whatever issue of concern it is the divine power of god that is able to produce it we're here thousands of us with our various requests representing our pain our disappointments our frustrations our expectations my assignment as a man of god is to bring your challenges face to face first with god and then his divine power and then if i can do that i finish my assignment my assignment is to connect your situation with the power of god and get out of the way and then you watch the wonder working power of jesus when you don't get out of the way you become an interruption to the efficiency of the power so the assignment of an anointed man of god as it were is to allow the lord to use him by the spirit of god to connect the challenges of people to his divine power if you can do that a miracle service has started hallelujah and so then it becomes it becomes mandatory upon us men and women of god to study the systems that can help us connect the power of god to people's problems like you connect a, a a fuse to a socket and switch it on you finish yours and the gadget begins to work it works for as long as that connection is there mm. hallelujah praise the lord so let it not surprise you if within the next few minutes you turn around and cannot see what you came here with it is his divine power mm. his divine power remember the testimony of our precious mother was so touched when she shared that testimony just like that in the twinkling of an eye someone's life changes the twinkling of an eye a grace you did not come here with goes back with you a twinkling of an eye a challenge that you have had that has been age long listen let me tell you don't get too used to the hand of satan on your life just because his hand has rested for a long time does not mean it cannot be lifted you tried lifting it with different graces so they did their best but there are graces that can lift it is true it is true praise the lord your assignment tonight is to believe that his divine power is able to come through for you and then number two to be prepared listen listen please this is your own part now to be prepared to respond by faith what does it mean to respond by faith to listen for the instructions that make for your result it's important every result has a strategy a pathway that produces it if your challenge is jericho you need to know how to go around and shout if your challenge is the red sea you need to know how to use the rod to part it if your challenge is five loaves and two fish to feed five thousand you need to know the mystery of thanksgiving that makes for multiplication if your challenge is the leprosy of naaman you need to know how to go to jordan to wash all results are not produced by the same strategy it is the same divine power but your faith must be anchored on an instruction that is tied to it deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord to do and observe all that i command you this day it says that you will be set up on high above all nations of the earth and that all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you praise the lord that's how it works so while you take your eyes away from your pain you must set your gaze on something else jesus the possibilities is it true oh god that you can turn my family situation around seven of us came for this miracle service and lord i don't even know where you will start but then you listen you listen you listen sometimes it can come as one prophetic word and it's done look let me tell you something the ease with which miracles happen i think is the reason why many people cannot receive it how do you look at someone like this and say go it's done 
what does that mean you are making a mockery of me i sang praise and worship i rolled on the ground and i stood here and all you tell me is go was that not what naman was complaining about he said you mean you want to embarrass me i just go and wash in a river i thought you will even come out and salute me and give me something more intelligent but you see the ways of god are not like the ways of men jesus was speaking to nicodemus and he said the wind blow it where it listed he says you cannot tell where it's going nor where it's coming he says so is one who is led of the spirit you have to be spiritual to understand the ways of god you have to be spiritual because traditions of men can make the word of god of non-effect it can strangle the potency of god's word but tonight i agree with you and i know that there are people here who are determined that everything we are going to be doing here within the next hour or so that it will culminate to a tangible result let me tell you this i love jesus christ i love him with all my heart and i made a vow unto god that among the many things that will happen to the people that he ever brings to me and puts under my care wasting their time will not be part of it i made up my mind by god that you should not come for koinonia twice to testify no 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 you should come twice to grow you should come twice to learn you should come twice to know god but one encounter should be enough it's true one encounter apostle i came to take fresh fire one encounter one encounter i came to break the bands of witchcraft and wickedness in my family one encounter one encounter apostle my family members did not come with me but they asked me to represent them it doesn't matter one encounter the power of god master he says he told the centurion let me come to your house to honor you being a captain in the army he said no for i am also like you a man under authority i understand the stretching power of authority i may be limited as a person but the roman government has a jurisdiction and that whoever is under the influence of that government can feel the effect of the government so they may not be here but the earth is still the lord's so they are still within the jurisdiction of his reach and if you are a man under the authority of that owner then the power of god should flow right in on the integrity and the sovereign power of that owner to touch anybody anywhere this i believe this i believe this i believe apostle i don't even know the name of my situation i've gone to the hospital they have done everything jesus if he said he was just healer would have found reason to be afraid later on but he says i am the resurrection and the life what is resurrection giving life to something that has no business having life resurrection resurrection I am he that was dead but now is alive apostle i came here with my cv is it that god cannot give me a job i've gone around looking for jobs again and again i've applied everywhere god should see my family what then is the blessing if the anointing cannot change the situation what does it mean to be a blessing as a man of god does it mean to preach well does it mean to be sympathetic to people's situation as important as that is sympathy does not produce result it only provides comfort god did not call us to be sympathizers no he says the spirit of the lord is upon me because he has anointed me too then he begins to list all the things that will happen and then at the end of all of those things he says to give them beauty for ashes the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called oak or the trees of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might in their result be glorified john chapter 17 and verse 1 jesus christ lifted up his eyes to the heavens praying and he taught us a principle there verse one he says father the hour has come and then he said glorify thy son that thy son may 
glorify thee so how is god glorified when the son is glorified how is god glorified as a healer when the son is healed when the daughter is healed how is god glorified as a lifter when the son is lifted when the daughter is lifted how is god glorified as a deliverer the dimension of god that he gets glory from is the dimension that the result manifests in your life he cannot be glorified as one who is quick and powerful until your life testifies it your goodness is real i testify your goodness is real your favor is real i testify your power is real i testify how then do you know the favor of god is real listen 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 your faith must grow to trust the difference between faith and trust is that faith is predicated on god's integrity are we together now it, uh, on who god is but trust is based on his integrity and his track record you cannot trust a man until there is a track record are we together if i'm meeting you for the first time dr emeka and they tell me you are a doctor I will have faith in you i can't trust you it's too early it's too early to trust you i will see what your injection does for me are we together now when you give me an injection and i cannot walk what should happen to you when you give me an injection i am fine then i come to you and you give me a recommendation and it works i begin to note you and associate you with my joy and then eventually i conclude that this man is worth my belief this man is also worth my staking my all to so that the day you give me an instruction that i do not understand i can reach back at the archives of your track record and say i may not know what you are saying but i know what you said and i know what i saw genesis 21 verse 1 genesis 21 i testify i testify that your goodness is real i testify i testify that your goodness is real and the lord visited sarah as he had said and the lord did to sarah as he has spoken trust in the lord how do you trust in the lord take cognizance of his benefits be observant what did he do in 2001 what did he do in 2005 you see if the lord had not been on our side now may israel say on the strength of that track record they named him they gave a name that should not change a testament of their trust A testament of their trust so your assignment is to believe that god is able take your eyes away i repeat take your eyes away please take your eyes away from anything that is not jesus tonight and focus apostle they've prayed for me a prophet just like you prayed for me an apostle just like you prayed for me a pastor even conducted night vigils in our house i know and i respect god and i respect the grace upon that man except that one more thing i did not teach you about the anointing is that not every anointing blesses you the man must be sent there were many widows in zarephath but to none was elijah sent when the word of god passes you it does not bless you it is when it is sent he sent not brought he sent forth it was when the king sent for joseph that his life changed when i sent thee lackest thou anything not when you moved around when i sent thee because every time he sends it his integrity is upon it tonight god is sending his word to me to you to us the word that lifts the word for your ministry the word for your life is going to be a quick walk some of you write from the communion 
as you partake from the communion you finish your own miracle service you will just join others in rejoicing it's true you know yesterday i observed and we learned yesterday that the reason why the communion does not produce is because we are only eating bread and juice we have not discerned it the bible says there is a sin that a man can commit the sin of not discerning the lord's body you cannot discern the possibilities that come from that body for many years i took communion and i was left in the dark as to the relevance of this thing in my life I would just take the wafer and take the the drink and then stop there nothing happened until i found out that the life-giving factor of everything is understanding understanding is what gives life to the spiritual activities and the processes that we're involved with so it is not enough to just hear it is not enough to just do it is the understanding that sponsors what we do that produces the results i don't know if there are people here tonight who are here insisting that as surely as there is a god in heaven whatever i came with i must leave it here tonight hmm. it is important god is giving you understanding now when i came into the house of the lord then understood i the house of god is bethel not just a place of bread but a place where the bread is broken Two men met Jesus in M house and they began to discuss the Messiah and he was there with them but they could not see and then when he broke bread the Bible declares that their eyes were open and he departed my assignment is to continue to study continually by the Spirit the processes that makes for the liberty of the saints much more than the transformation of the saints much more than providing an atmosphere for encounters the saints need to be brought to a point where they encounter the reality of God's power the power of God can be encountered hallelujah so we're going to partake of the communion very quickly and for many of you this will be one communion you will not forget It doesn't matter even if you are the one who serves your own communion you may serve it like a ritual the wafer does not have any power to do anything for you the bread the cup does not have any power but how shall these things be when I'm using only bread and cup the power of the highest shall overshadow that emblem and whatever comes out of it can produce any result a handkerchief and an apron is not even alive talk more of having faith but when his divine power comes upon it it becomes an instrument of signs and wonders the air that you breathe and the sound that is produced from you does not sustain any power except that when your speaking becomes the voice of God then it is no longer the words of man John said I am the voice of one so when you hear me you hear that one hmm. hallelujah when it's time to pray for the sick i like you to believe god believe god to set people free we we'll do it very fast because there are so many people and praying for the sick takes a lot of time we'll do it fast and then after that we'll do the deliverance and the impartation and whatever it is that needs to leave you it must go it must go this night it must go this night please jump up on your feet your divine power your divine power able to lift me to a higher dimension in the spirit your divine power is someone praying on the last day of the feast jesus came and said is anyone thirsty is anyone thirsty the final day of the feast Shananda Prakatos Shekete Prekete Baladabash. Go ahead and pray, please. Inside, outside. Lift your voices and pray.
are you praying lord i believe it is your divine power now i know how the results will come your divine power i know how the lifting will come your divine power i'm under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me i am under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over me we are under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over us we are under the shadow of your wings your influence is all over us. Lift your voice and pray. Sabarando Senekatabariatash. Tonight is my night. I discern. I discern. Sabrakato Senekebrash. And the lega brande zedika shobra gada baladabash, krato zazi gada barunde ketosh, embra kato zale ke pradish, shebra di kafosh, rakato bari ada baladabash, rakato bari indes ke meritash, rakapa rudasi ada baladaba, he barando zale karusi ada baladaba. Please keep praying. Hela baranda zazia hasa barando kate prekedi balaraba. Hallelujah. John chapter six. John chapter 6 we'll begin our reading from verse 49 to 56 John chapter 6 your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead next verse this is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die 51 I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, not is like my flesh. Is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. 52. And the Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? 53. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Stop here. Just, just go back. Just go back. This is what he's saying. That in the flesh of the Son of Man and in the blood of the Son of Man is his life. That the life of the flesh is in the blood. Are we together now? Listen very carefully. So that when you partake, please keep that scripture. When you partake of it with understanding, the Bible says that you are not just taking a wafer, you are not just taking a drink, but that you are, you are opening up yourself to partake of the life of God. Next verse. 54. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood, had, I told you the word there is not eternal life. It's the word zoe. It's not the longevity of the life, but the quality of the life. And I will raise him up on the last day, 55. We're stopping at 56. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. The last verse. 
he that eateth my flesh this is it and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him this is a theological concept called the doctrine of interpenetration is the system by which two separate entities are interwoven to become one the same mystery in marriage the same mystery with the spirit of god so that by the mystery of partaking in the communion that means the spirit should not know the difference between your body and god's body are we together now yes let me tell you what that means come look at this emeka come watch this if this lady is his wife and she's weak and he's strong his strength is her own too you understand that are you getting me not part of his strength his strength so if you say she's strong you are right are we together now this is very important now that means that when she's strong and he's weak her strength is his strength too interpenetration and so now when you partake of this although your body may be weak and frail although your finances may be weak and frail although your ministry may be weak and frail although your body may be ravaged by all kinds of demons but here you are introducing like you are shaking the hand of the other partner in a wrestling and here he comes through this mystery as little as this is let me tell you when you understand this mystery you will not even be able to hold this thing you see like this hallelujah i'm going to pray on this and then we're going to distribute it around it's simple enough for you to open you just tear open the wafer and then the drink and please the moment you do do not litter the ground do not litter the ground i don't know what provision has been made for that but if no provision has been made whilst you take it provided you are not under the anointing just pass it to the last person at the aisle and then you make it easy for the ushers or whoever is involved to just pick them up you can use the off the bowls or whatever you have to have them we're going to pray please pray in one minute and mention the things that must live your life because they are not found in the life of the Christ please pray by wisdom oh God heaven's gates open up with understanding you order the season creating day and night turning darkness into light arranging the stars to your pleasing but i can't Blessed are you, O Lord our God, eternity's holy King. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, whose words bring in the evening. Please pray in one minute. We discern your body. We discern your body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, it should go around. I believe that they just brought this to represent the communion. I'm going to pray on this. This is ordinary wafer and a drink. But not after the power of God comes upon it. It says anything receives power after the Holy Ghost comes on it. Not just men. You shall receive power. The you can be this. Can receive power. Provided the Holy Ghost comes on it. It didn't say men shall receive power. No. Anything receives power when the Holy Ghost comes upon it. Your pain receives power when the Holy Ghost comes on it. Your ministry receives power when the Holy Ghost comes on it. Your communion 
receives power when the Holy Ghost comes on it father in the name of Jesus Christ I lay my hands upon this I lay my hands upon this communion representing all others that are not here I decree oh God that in a very strange way may your power flow through this in the name of Jesus let it bring miracles let it bring all kinds of deliverances in the name of Jesus whoever partakes of this tonight in the name of Jesus I declare instantly may your power begin to rest upon them let all kinds of breakthroughs begin to happen let infirmities give way in the name of Jesus let deliverances let devils and demons begin to leave let doors begin to open in the name of Jesus Christ my flesh is meat indeed we partake with understanding we partake with understanding please make sure everybody something will begin to happen to you as you partake of this you will marvel and wonder at the power of the communion Go ahead, take it with faith and watch the wonder-walking power, the wonder-walking power of Jesus, the wonder-walking power of Jesus. bring all those under the anointing out please bring them out quickly while we wait for the rest to finish please just bring them out quickly something is opening up in your spirit man my flesh is meat indeed my blood is drink indeed Please bring those under the anointing. There is a reason why I ask you to bring them. I want to pray for them. Something is already happening in the realm of the spirit. Whoa. Please be 
revelation tonight God is setting people free when there is understanding to your spiritual activity then the power is released the power is released you will not believe the kinds of burdens that are leaving people already mm. my flesh is meat indeed my blood is drink indeed he that eateth of my flesh and drinketh of my blood hath my life not been planted by my father will be uprooted is it not written in your word that for this purpose the son of God was made manifest that he may destroy I decree in the name of Jesus we are going to begin to minister now that every force that is not of the Christ Right now, I decree and declare by an apostolic and a prophetic rod scattered around this crowd, inside and outside, everybody under any kind of bondage, I decree, be free now. Be free now. I command judgment on strange spirits. In the name of Jesus. The spirits of ancestry, the workings of bloodlines and territories, I come against you by the God of heaven. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty. Listen, we're still praying. Please pay attention. I'm praying now. The Lord is showing me families. I'm seeing families under an intense yoke of retrogression. Nothing moves in that family. You can go to school. It doesn't make any difference. You can get a job. It doesn't make any difference. Have a business. It doesn't make any difference. I stretch my hands. Where are those people? 
inside and outside i declare right now the power of god is coming upon you it's time for your family to be released at the count of three one two three be free now be free now be free now i lose your family i set them free i set them free Surely there is an end, the Bible says. Surely there is an end. Even weeping endures only for a night. I declare freedom on those families now. I declare freedom. Don't be distracted. Just pay attention, please. Samarakato Zegedesh. Ilabanda Rahas Kabarukato Shadekata. Paruzes Yanakata. Breketela Kuzianamas. Kratena Zaziamakatos. You rise to a level and then you crash back. It's a pattern that exists in families. There's nothing wrong with rising. Keep rising. But you plateau at a level and then you crash back. I stretch my hands now. This is what the Lord is showing me. My God. My God. I decree and declare. The spirit that causes men to rise up and crash back in shame. Represented in anyone here. The legal hold upon which you operate is caused now in the name of Jesus. I release such people right now. Be released in the name of Jesus. Be released in the name of Jesus. Overflow 3, please lift your hands. The Lord is showing me something happening in Overflow 3. Overflow 3, please lift your hands. Mighty God. Mighty God. I see a lot of attacks. Serious attacks on Overflow 3. I don't know for whatever reason that the people that are sitting there, I'm seeing a lot of attacks. At the count of 3, Overflow 3. I want you to shout the name Jesus and there will be a mighty deliverance there. Overflow three. One, two, three. Shout Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm seeing the gate of a prison and I'm seeing people inside. The gate of a prison, like the front of a prison. And I remember scripture says to open, to set at liberty them that are bound. There are people who are moving, but are in prison. All sorts of prisons. Right now I decree and declare, even by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let the doors and the chains and the yokes that keep you in bondage. I declare that those chains are loose now. I declare that those chains are loose now. And for all those in front here, representing all those that I'm praying for, I declare not only that the spirits leave you, but that whatever they took from you, as surely as the God of heaven leaves, your families must testify of that restoration. Therefore, leave them now. Go, go. Out of them now. In the name of Jesus, release their families. Release their spiritual lives. Release their finances. Paradox is a hasaka paradosia. Lembra ghetto scalaricious Hebras Kodash Prakato Baradu Zaziana Katabaladash 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please, this road, lift your hands. I just see angelic activities happening here. And I'm seeing something being removed out of people's stomachs. This is what I'm seeing here. Something is being removed out of people's stomachs. That's what the Lord is showing me. Just this row. I don't know what it is, but God is uprooting something that should not be there by the Spirit of the living God. Let it go. Let it go in the name of Jesus. I place the word of God upon that situation. It must let you go right now. The Lord is taking something out. I still continue to see this vision. God is taking something out of people's stomachs. The spirit of the Lord is there is liberty, there is liberty, there is liberty, there is liberty. I'm seeing the feet of a man, and I'm seeing the feet of a man under chains. Under chains, this is what I see. And the Lord is showing me fire coming to break and consume the feet. I know that this vision is a representation of stagnation again over men and families. And I declare right now, according to that which the Lord has shown me, in the name of Jesus, that anyone whose feet is being tied in the same position, right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, right now something is happening to people. I decree, I decree, and I declare. Let there be liberty now. Inside, outside, let there be liberty. Right now. Let there be liberty, liberty. I command progress to your life. Move forward. I push you by prophecy. Move forward. Make progress. Move forward. Make progress. I forbid stagnation. Move forward. Make progress. I don't know how to pray this prayer now those who are fine up here can return to their seats I want to pray a prayer and this will affect a lot of people you don't have to bring the people out I found myself pray this prayer again and again and again and again almost everywhere I've traveled in the last two to three months the Lord has mandated that I pray this prayer and my goodness, the testimonies that have come from this. This is the Lord walking in the midst of his people. That lady is not yet free, my friend. Osha, be discerning. In the name of Jesus, that lady is not yet free. It's a realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power. Moving in this place, we're in the presence of angels with God's glory on their wings. And like the voice of many waters, I can hear the angels sing. You are holy, you are holy, you are holy. Please, someone should join the PR can join the ushers, protocol can join the ushers. I want to pray. There is a grace for speed 
there is an exact grace speed is not progress no no there is a difference between progress and speed i had an encounter with the lord and he placed this grace upon my life if not that it happened i know there is advancement and i know there is speed but i never knew what it was and how it operated until the lord gave me an encounter truly let me tell you there is a real grace for speed and when that grace comes on you you will join the world in shock as to what becomes of your life and the lord wants that grace to come on somebody this night there's someone here that needs this grace this is why you came it's not like you are stagnated but it takes forever if you will believe if you will humble yourself this night and open your spirit you will be surprised I'm going to pray this prayer. The reason why I ask some people to join is because every time I pray this prayer, people begin to run in the spirit and by the spirit. I don't know why it happens that way. Be sensitive, please. And then it is of the spirit. Please don't ask me why it happens that way. But if you will let me pray this prayer tonight, God can make five years the result of five years to come within even a month i know it works when you have this grace on your life you don't fear delay it makes no difference you will gain time within moments i decree and declare by the privilege of god's grace i stretch my hands inside everywhere over for one two three online father i pray right now let the grace for speed at the count of three, come upon someone. One, two, three. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. I shift you. Speed. 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 Speed to your spiritual life. Speed to your finances. Speed in ministry. Speed in business. Speed upon your influence. This is a major answer to your prayer. I declare it again. Speed. Speed. Receive it. Receive it. It is not by might nor by power. But by the spirit of God. You can be picked up upon the wings of the spirit. And do things that eyes have not seen that ears have not heard i pray it again those outside receive it those outside receive it i declare speed in the similitude of elijah you will run and you will overtake the chariots of aha Hallelujah. 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 We are going to pray. We have to redeem time. There is a lot to do. Your wife started a journey in the spirit. I'm seeing a prophetic progression in her life. There is a prophetic mantle that is searching for her. It's begun gradually this woman you are seeing as frail as she may look but the hand of god will come upon her and she will speak forth the purposes of god with power i stretch my hands upon you and i pray that the spirit of god will perfect let there be a bathing a bathing of the things that he has begun upon your life a bathing of the things that he has begun my friend come this man we may not have time to prophesy to people there's a lot to do lift your hands i don't know you you are coming from somewhere and there are two graces that god is bringing upon your life number one is for your own benefit restoration that's what i hear number two this speed that you see i prayed for is coming upon you i stretch my hands 
may that grace in the name of jesus first for restoration let there be a restoration of everything the devil has stolen and then i declare speed you receive it now move forward go forward in the name of jesus christ hallelujah there's an elderly woman here called rebecca 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 if we talk to people the time will be gone we have to honor it so that we can do some other things who is that rebecca Please, when you find the person I want to talk to her in the name of Jesus Christ we are going to pray for the sick Kai. this woman is outside you are not inside you are wearing a red like wrapper on your head the same with what is down on you Confirm it. Mama, your name is Rebecca. Where are you? From outside? I will pray for you now. I don't know you. I've never seen you, but I want to pray for you. The Lord is going to honor you. I decided to take a pause because um, the Lord just asked me to stand here. That's why I'm standing here. I'm standing here because I saw something that looked like a bird just come out of someone right here like this just like that just out of someone this is what i saw in the name of jesus release this family now release this family now in the name of jesus christ madam i'll pray for you your name is rebecca too please come i will pray for you i found the person i'm ministering to but i'll pray for you from where madam from where from area c area c yes sir. i want to pray for you what's wrong with your back back pain yes, yes, this is what i'm true. seeing you it's get up true, in the morning and, true. and then you feel a lot yes, of pain sometimes yes. you cannot even wash yes, yes. number two your chest too yes, it's true. severe it's chest true around the breast region yes, here. the lord is setting you free right now madam in the name of jesus let it be over right now and forever in the mighty name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ ah! i just had like a car crash in my ears you know how an accident just happens right now this is what i just had in my ears and that the family that that should happen for is in this place i'm going to pray right now be free now i command death you are a spirit i judge you by the god of heaven and to deliver them who through the fear of death have all their lifetime been subject to bondage i want to pray for you madam in the name of jesus christ that god himself will bless you and not only bless you where are your children madam huh? here. your children are here yes. where are they patient Isaac patient Isaac and Sarah this may be the last word and then we have to pray for the sick there's a lot patience and Isaac now only glow no day here let me just pray for you if, if you are the only one who can represent them stand up please my friend mama i will pray for you in the name of jesus christ because i'm seeing a very major breakthrough coming to this family the lord himself is bringing it to a very major breakthrough i have no business saying anything god did not tell me i've not prayed the prayer yet yet you are receiving it is the grace for favor the grace for favor the grace for favor this man will be like a well watered garden that the favor of God will call him Beulah and Hephzibah in the name of Jesus Christ 
I pray for you, Ma. Please hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, the breakthrough that the Lord shows me, let it come and come speedily. In the name of Jesus Christ. You are her daughter? Let me pray for you, my dear. In the name of Jesus Christ, they will not say there is something in your stomach growing. Huh? I'm rebuking something. They will not tell you that there is a growth that is growing in your stomach. I just laid my hands and God is healing someone in overflow one. Oh, please hold on. There is a growth. There is a growth. There is a growth. This has been characterized by extremely painful. Your period is extremely painful. But more than that, there is a growth just around your abdominal area. Overflow one. You don't have to come out. The power of God is touching that person right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. My dear, in Jesus' name, by the Spirit of the living God, we declare your liberty. Complete, total, final. In Jesus' name I pray. Praise the Lord. Now, we're going to pray for the sick. Praying for the sick takes a lot of time. Our time is already gone. I, I bless God that there are a number of hands tonight. Now, listen, we believe in the power of God to touch people, to lift people, and most times you would notice in my external ministrations i don't have time to minister to people one by one but because this is a miracle service dedicated for that the lord has honored us to be a light on this wise in this city and it is important that we're fair enough to just allow the power of god extend to people we'll do it very fast um all of the overflows all of the overflows i would request that you just move those trusting god for healing particularly please i would request that you move to the front of your projector screen that's where you are going to be prayed for um the ones that spill over do i call that overflow five now i will just request you to be patient we're going to assign a person or two there to minister to you but overflow four three two one and right in here you are here you came standing in for someone or standing in for yourself please make your way out here very quickly and let's trust the god of heaven to set you free you are here full of faith please stand up please stand up if you kneel there will not be space just come stand it doesn't matter you don't have to come in if you're outside just go to your overflow please hallelujah myself alongside the men and the women of god represented here will be praying for you look how many people are trusting god to touch them hallelujah now please you don't have to ask anybody to prophesy or speak just let them minister to you if there is need to speak any words they will let you know praise the lord there are so many people this night and so we'll do our best so we can gain time and just just line everybody here and then we'll pray for you praise the lord pray for just be patient and allow the men of god minister to you while that is happening our time is already gone please stretch your hands if you've not submitted your request um you can just wave it and someone will pick it up from you especially for those outside you're yet to submit your request just stretch your hands right here and let us agree this hold on please this is not religion this is not tradition this is not a ritual this is a mystery it's a revelation let us not get used to doing this just as a ritual for the miracle service because when we have the form without the power then it will not bless us there have been many many wonderful testimonies that have come out from here and um, since I'm the only one here let the men of God minister to you if you are still being ministered to just focus on the ministration but then for all others just stretch your hands towards me and let's agree that these Egyptians we see today, that we will see no more. Please agree. Release your faith and believe we are praying. 
we may not be able to prophesy to you personally we may not be able to give you a word of knowledge but this is a representation of your heart your pain your desire your expectation the bible says and thine expectation shall not be caught short stretch your hands and let's agree there is a god that answers prayers you someone praying online pray the overflows pray father we declare we are declaring as the church we are releasing and anointing the divine power of god upon these requests some of these requests are death sentences some of them are humanly impossible situations but unto you that answers prayer shall all flesh come in the name of jesus we declare upon these requests a representation of the tears and the pain of your people we decree and we declare makratos kalambra de keparuza ziakata bradias ile pereto zaziakata baranda gadash kritos kalabara gadabala nabosh shalabaranda kapuros we decree and we declare manda prados kaziza hashkala baranda kata arise for your people by the abundance of your mercy give your people testimonies in the name of jesus jiprakatos kalabarakata believers pray we are agreeing likato janana kata barados Jabros katabaranda kata supernatural manifestations of your power supernatural manifestations of your power supernatural manifestations of your power hela barakata soza brenda kedebash lord in the name of jesus we declare supernatural walkings of miracles tonight we declare healing miracles. We declare miracles of provisions. We declare miracles of jobs. We declare sentences of death are broken. In the name of Jesus. We declare supernatural interception. Angelic interventions tonight. We declare diverse kinds of miracles. Diverse walkings of miracles. In the name of Jesus. We declare creative miracles. We call new organs. We call new jobs. We call for children. We call for deliverances of families. We declare miracles on every side. Let tears of family be wiped away. In the name of Jesus. We declare diverse testimonies tonight. By the workings of miracles by the divine power of God in the name of Jesus thank you father father we thank you for your mercy we thank you for your the heavens are open in the name of Jesus we thank you for creative miracles we thank you for money miracles we thank you for supernatural deliverances we thank you, Lord, for manifesting your power. We thank you for miracle babies. We thank you for miracle job. We thank you for special miracles. Father, Lord, we thank you for the manifestation of the world you have decreed over our lives. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we receive answer to every prayer request here tonight in the name of Jesus. We receive answers tonight in the name of Jesus. 
special miracles uh, in the name of Jesus. Diverse kinds of testimonies uh, in the name of Jesus. Angelic interventions uh, in the name of Jesus. Supernatural supplies uh, in the name of Jesus. Great open doors uh, in the name of Jesus. We give you praise, O oh God. Uh, in Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Let's give Jesus praise. We agree that as we have declared it is done in Jesus name praise the Lord our time is gone please give me two minutes we must do the impartation we have been fasting we have been praying and we have trivialized impartation in the body of Christ we are always looking for people to lay hands on always looking for people to prophesy on so every time we talk about an impartation there is hardly an expectation but a real impartation brings result. You can carry something now that you did not come here with. Please believe. An impartation is not just an anointing for ministry. I told you it's a transference of possibilities. Praise the Lord. So in the next two, three minutes, please let your heart be opened. You don't have to bring anybody out under the anointing. Just guide them, but please receive. Please receive. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit no matter the quality of your secret place you will need impartation there are possibilities in your life that cannot evolve just from your secret place you will need to tap into the provision that has been vested in the body hallelujah I pray in the name of Jesus the grace you don't have to kneel please you don't have to kneel the grace that makes for a new level of visions people have lost visions in the body of christ we tell lies that we are seeing but we are not seeing anything father the eyes that see genuine visions let there be a restoration let that mantle fall upon someone right now in the name of jesus christ the eyes that can see into the realm of the spirit the ears that can hear the sound of the spirit. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. That prophetic river locked up within your spirit. In the name that is above all names. The grace for the prophetic in a new dimension. Who is this grace coming upon? Mabato Zabarakata Embreketeta upon all flesh, he says, I will pour out my spirit. Receive that anointing now in the name of Jesus. I believe in miracles, and I believe that there is a distinct grace for signs and wonders. I'm stretching my hands. I'm seeing a dove. This is what I'm seeing. Just like a bird hovering round. In the name of Jesus Christ. Upon as many whose hearts are open. Father the anointing. The real anointing. For signs for wonders. Pari gato shalentara makata. Brakatos kebarata. Inside, outside. Especially upon men and women of God. I decree and declare. Let this grace for signs and wonders fall upon you now in the name of jesus fall upon you now for your church for your fellowship for your prayer group i say it again for your church for your fellowship for your prayer group receive it in the name of jesus the spirit of wisdom there is a spirit of wisdom It says, doth not wisdom cry. Wisdom speaking says, with me are. It says, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. It says, with me are riches, wealth, and honor. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. I declare, the grace to know what to do is called the spirit of wisdom. The grace to know what to do. Let it come upon you right now. Let it come upon you right now. 
let the spirit of wisdom come upon you right now let the spirit of wisdom come upon you right now please help those under the anointing talabarus kanama hashanas ratakapalusa siadash I want to release favor the grace that can make a king say up to half of my kingdom there is a grace for favor I testify to you people of the living God there is a grace for favor it is not of him that run it nor of him it is not of him that that um, run it what's the scripture we net not of him that run it but of the Lord that showeth mercy he said thou shall arise and have mercy upon zion and the reason why you have mercy is because the time to favor her yea the set time favor will take away hardship from your life not just financially even spiritually i decree and declare receive the grace for favor it's coming upon you receive the grace for favor receive the grace favor in ministry favor in business favor in ministry favor in business favor in ministry favor in business in the name of jesus every geography has its favor may the favor associated with your geography if it was on the rocks the king built on the rocks it was an advantage if it was the sea they channeled the water for productivity every territory has access to favor i declare that the favor a portion for your territory let it rest upon you right now i want to pray for the spirit of revelation to make all men see the fellowship of this mystery let me tell you this I confess to you sincerely under God that by the privilege of God's grace I'm a student of the word but I can tell you this no matter how frequent you read this there is a spirit that must come on you for your eyes to see otherwise sometimes you will see but what you will see is error sometimes what you will see will deceive you I'm praying for you we need revelation we need revelation we need revelation we need revelation some of you started with a rich deposit of this spirit but as it is right now you open scripture and you don't see anything all you continue to do is copy the messages of men of god verbatim i declare that a unique grace for revelation let it rest upon you right now access inside access inside access inside into the mysteries of the kingdom this is the year of extraordinary fruitfulness i believe there is a grace for wealth i believe it i believe there are principles for wealth i believe there are understandings that can bring resources but i believe there is a grace there is an exact spiritual grace that works by causing men to come with their blessings when that grace came upon saul three men holding two loaves of bread each saluted him and gave him one in the name that is above all names in this season that God has ordained for the body that in addition to the prosperity of our souls in addition to understanding influence and the principles of spiritual transformation let the grace that can cause a man to rise and become as strong as a nation financially may that grace rest upon you may that grace rest upon you may that grace rest upon you in the name of jesus i believe there is a grace that shields men from destruction he said destroy it not for there is a blessing in it don't touch this one there is something upon it i decree and declare let the mark that exempts men from terrorism from kidnapping 
from assassination, from accidents, the grace that exempts, receive it right now. For you and for your family, receive it right now. Receive it right now. I declare that whatever you have lost coming here, it doesn't matter how long, please believe, release your faith. Right now in the name of Jesus Christ, I command a sevenfold restoration. I command a sevenfold restoration. Restoration of anointings, of money, of ideas, of relationships, of access, of illumination. In the name of Jesus. I pray for every ministry represented here. Whatever has clamped your wings so that your influence cannot spread beyond certain borders. I declare by the power of the spirit, shift to a new dimension. Shift to a new dimension of teaching, of the miraculous, of the demonstration of the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. I will multiply them. They will not be small. I will glorify them. They will not be few. Whatever keeps you small, in the name of Jesus, I decree and declare that power is broken over you now. All those trusting God for jobs here, yeah. you are trusting God, you have agreed with God and said, Lord, settle me, give me an honorable job. I release my faith with you and I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that by this time next month let it please the Lord that you return with testimonies let me pray for those in business father the grace that came upon Tyre and Sidon that made them to be called the marketplaces of the earth. I decree and declare that the spirit not only of innovation but the mastery to exchange your value. The grace, the fortitude to know how to exchange your value such that you are rewarded. May that grace come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak to every dying business here. Hear the word of the Lord. Come alive now in the name of Jesus. Everyone trusting God for the fruit of the womb. In the name of Jesus, whether for you or for your loved ones, we agree by the power that put Jesus in the womb of Mary. In the name that is above all names, is called the power of the highest that can put a seed in the womb of a woman. And keep that seed until it delivers. May that grace and that power come upon you now. We cause barrenness. We cause impotency. In the name of Jesus. Whoever has what it takes to favor you. The Bible says withhold not good from them that is due when it is within your power. I declare whoever has the power to support you. The power to help lift you. We compel them by the spirit to favor you. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray in the name of Jesus. We are rounding up the prayer and fasting. Many of you have stretched your capacity spiritually. I declare. The fire of prayer. That can burn an incense and cause it to reach heaven in the name of Jesus every attack on your prayer life let the seven lampstands of your prayer life be lit back right now in the name of Jesus Christ receive the grace to travail Receive the grace to pray. Any evil and wicked company and association around your life. You are not free till your association is free. I declare to you 
you may be nice but you are surrounded by wicked people who do not fear God I declare a separation between you and the wicked I declare right now divine direction for people who are saying Lord what is the next step in this season should I stay here or should I go the Bible says and thine ear shall hear a voice listen let me tell you one mistake to miss the will of God can cost you years before you return I declare accuracy of perception in the name of Jesus Christ that the God of heaven will give you peace by all means in the name of Jesus the last prayer point and we are done thou shall anoint Aaron and his sons and thou shall put upon him some of your honor honor is a grace it is transferable honor can be put upon a man in the name of Jesus Christ it says therefore God even thy God hath anointed you with an oil of gladness above your fellows this is not in a competitive manner but I pray for you the grace that distinguishes men from the crowd may that grace rest upon you now in the name of Jesus Christ Thank you, Jesus. Let it be from tonight that miracles and testimonies that you have never seen in your life, we release them. Listen, listen. Noah released the dove from the ark after the rain. It returned back as proof that it did not have a resting place. Then he waited a while and returned and it came back with a little olive an almond tree, an olive plant as a sign that life was restoring he sent it back the third time and it did not come back again this is how testimonies are they can be sent and they return because the condition for them to stay is not there and then they return again and say the anointing is now being introduced in that life and by the third time they are ready to be established i pray for you every long-standing testimony that has already been released from the throne and for whatever means has refused to be established in your life i declare right now in the name of jesus let that testimony manifest in your life now let that testimony manifest in your life now. Anyone that says over his dead body for you to succeed, may God answer their prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for all of those who have come from far. I agree with you. I release my faith. Whether for the miracle service tonight or all through the prayer and the fasting. I agree. The same way Moses tabernacled upon the mount and returned with the radiance of the glory upon his face. Return with the grace to prove that you met God. Return with the testimonies that prove that you met God. Return with the signs, the wonders, the transformation, the illumination. Return with the evidences of an encounter. In the name of Jesus. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our time is gone. I sincerely apologize. But we thank the Lord for the encounter tonight. You will live to testify. Very quickly, please let's, let's settle down.
very quickly please just help that woman so she doesn't injure anyone there are people here please listen overflow one two three four online there are people here who probably have been attending the conference or just came in here tonight and whilst you heard me teach and whilst you saw the things that the lord did in this place the holy spirit began to convict you that you need jesus jesus is not an idea jesus is not something and someone you can do without i believe with all my heart that and please prepare to clear the way for them overflow one two three if you are at the door please shift there are people here under the sound of my voice who are saying apostle if you will make an altar call i need jesus i need him desperately i need him truly there are others who are saying i love jesus but for whatever reason i need a restoration and i need my life back with him whether you belong to any of these categories please inside and outside i'm only going to count five don't be ashamed don't be afraid i want you to leave your seat very boldly and come and stand here it will be my joy and delight to lead you to jesus don't wait for someone to come before you be the first i'm counting one come quickly come quickly koinonia let's honor them let's motivate them as they come please clear the way for those who are coming from outside two Apostle, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm born again or not. Join them. Join them. Join them. Join them. I come from a Christian family. Am I born again? No, sir. Join them. I have very good friends. Am I born again? No, sir. Join them. The Lord is still talking to someone. I would want to come, but I'm afraid of my friends and those we came with. Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, he said, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. I believe the Lord is still speaking to a few people. If you're coming, please come quickly. Young, old, make your way. Let tonight be your night of salvation. He says, in the day that you hear his voice, do not harden your heart like they did in the provocation in the wilderness. Today, if you hear his voice do not harden your heart hallelujah if there are any ones coming just allow them to quickly come i appreciate every one of you for making this bold decision please mean it sincerely and truthfully lift your right hand and say after me believing that jesus is here say lord jesus i love you and i believe in you that you are the son of god tonight I receive your life I receive your grace and I declare please help them and I declare that salvation is mine new life is mine from today till forever Jesus is my Savior is my Lord is my friend I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and I declare that I reign in life amen may the Lord bless you dearly beloved I hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God our man of God Apostle Joshua Salmon and that is I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep